I didn't do anything. Just came back on the phone. Okay. Then I'd like to call this meeting to order and acknowledge that we are in Treaty 1 territory, the home and traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, Inanu, and Dakota peoples, and in the national homeland of the Red River Métis. Our drinking water comes from Shoal Lake 40 First Nation in Treaty 3 territory. My name is Ian Mann, and I will be the chair today. Joining me on the panel via Zoom are Diane Knight and Lynn Nesbitt. Our assessor for the city today is Mr. Jeremy Pohl, and our recording secretary is Bellin Rojo. We will be hearing applications for revision of the business assessment rule in accordance with the Municipal Assessment Act and the City of Winnipeg Charter. The matters for which revision is requested have been described in each application and we will limit discussion to those matters. The statements that are made at this hearing are sworn testimony and anyone speaking to the matters must be sworn in. Be advised that comparisons of assessments of properties are not considered evidence of the market value by the Board of Revision. The Board of Revision is appointed annually by Council and is independent of it and the City Administration. It makes its decisions on the basis of the evidence provided at this hearing and issues a written order that will be mailed to all parties as soon as possible. Please note that the Board's decisions with respect to an application may be appealed to the Manitoba Municipal Board if the matter pertains to assessed value or to the Court of King's Bench if the matter pertains to the application of exemptions from taxation. Should you wish to appeal, information on how to do so will be included with the Board's order. With respect to the hearing process, I will confirm the points of appeal with your property to be addressed with each applicant following the swearing in. We will then have the assessor's testimony followed by questions that the applicant may have, and then the applicant's testimony followed by questions. Each side will have the opportunity to summarize if they wish. Once all the evidence about an application has been brought forward, the applicant may leave. The process will repeat for each item on the docket today, and the session will close after all of the applications have been heard. The board will then deliberate in private and make its decision. You will receive the board's decision by registered mail as soon as possible. As information, all public hearings are live streamed, recorded, and will be part of the public record. We will be hearing matters 1 through 12 on our docket today. Ms. Rojo, please affirm the assessor and the applicant's testimony. Mr. Assessor, please state your full name. Jeremy Ryan Pohl. And you affirm the entry by present that this hearing is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Mr. Applicant, please state your full name. Howard Lindsay McCubbin. And you are from the Evans Bar present that this hearing is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. Item number one on the docket today is Pacific or Street Address 1330 Dougald Avenue. I believe that there is one preliminary matter and that involves some evidence that was forwarded by the applicant over the weekend. It's photographic evidence. Mr. Pohl, did you receive that evidence? Yeah, I just looked at it now. Well, I mean, it was received this morning. Um, it's uh, pictures of his comparables, I believe. Yes, that's my understanding as well. Uh, is there any objection to the board considering this or should we deliberate and decide what we uh, intend to do with it? No, I'll let the panel make its own decision on that. It is late. Typically, if it was in a re in a, in a, a realty hearing, you may call and have enough time to look at it. But uh, I haven't had a chance to really look at it uh, since I got it this morning. But it does appear to be just uh, photographs of uh, locations of the comparables. So I, I don't really have an objection to it. Okay, thank you then. Um, if you can begin, please, with 1330 Dugald. Lead us through your presentation. <coughs> Okay, sure. Uh, file number is 224502, uh, 1330 Dougal. Business number or business ID number is 2507. Transcona Trailer Sales uh, Limited. Uh, the annual rental value is $327,780. Comprises of uh, 2100 or 21,574 square feet. And the ARV overall is $15.19. We see below that. Uh, that the basement we applied was $12.93 and the occupancy costs are to the right, which case is back to the ARV. Uh, this is owner occupied. Um, we have confirmed this in the past. I've looked at this property in detail. It is owner occupied. Uh, on the next page uh, is the order. Uh, I was participated in, uh, in um, the realty hearing for this property. It was confirmed, as you see below. Um, and it was confirmed, if you look on page three, it was based on the evidence that the assessment taxation department presented. 
So on the next page is uh, we'll rely on uh, basically the same analysis <clears throat> of information. So on page four starts the realty brief. As you can see on page five, we had 21,574 square feet applied to $12.93, which is what we have under the field today. Uh, the next page over <clears throat> on page seven is a uh, aero photograph of the property. As you can see, there's sales and service. Uh, just so you know, I am a customer here from time to time. I do a trailer. Uh, they sell they sell and service uh, and have inventory that uh, any um, RV or with, with, with need over the over the course of ownership of their RV. Uh, but one thing that it doesn't really show here, and it gets a little bit on the next page, you can kind of see where the rule stops in purple as it leads out. And on the next page, on page eight, as it leads back, they do carry inventory on stop on site, but they do also sell service and then they winterize and store uh, their vehicles as well. So the money that you would get from storing vehicles would flow through the front, but we're not considering that today. Um, simply because uh, it would be on a different role. But again, all the money, it's just a gravel yard at the back. Um, but all the money for the storage would flow through that office. So this is part of the dealership. So <clears throat> on the next pages, starting on page eight, I was uh, inspection in 2020. Uh, it just gives a, a good feel for the property. Uh, again, they sell and service uh, uh, recreational vehicles, power sports, if you want to. Uh, they have some power sports in there as far as quads and and uh, Articat uh, lineup, uh, but mainly they are um, an RV dealership. And as you go through, uh, it's what you would expect. Um, they have inventory up front, showroom up front, storage in the back, um, and obviously they have sales starting or service starting on page twenty of the brief, as they have bays to service the vehicles. Uh, and you can just go through them. If you scroll through them, you see exactly what we're getting at. So um, as I indicated on page 25, they don't just do, um, they don't just do um, RVs. They also, like I said, their Articac lineup, they carry so ATP snowmobiles. And uh, I believe they carry a few small, a uh, uh, few small, um, uh, necessary needs for um, for RV for RV or so generators stuff like that. Um, on page thirty or page twenty eight is the same comparables that we used uh, in the realty hearing. So let's see here again today. We have an average weighted average and median hovering around eighteen dollars. Weighted average being eighteen to one. Um, this is more of um, we the the municipal classifies it as a periphery dealership or an industrial flavored dealership. It's not a it's not a um, residential fleet vehicle car dealership, uh, if you want to put it that way, but it is definitely um, a dealership. So we classify it as a vehicle dealership as well. So with that, uh, I feel that the assessment should be confirmed here today as the same information for the rent was confirmed prior at the realty hearing and uh, without any significant differences uh, or substantial differences uh, or errors, uh, they should be confirmed here today again. Without a moment of questions. Thank you, uh, Mr. McCubbin. Questions for Mr. Paul? Yes, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Paul, you've uh, you've uh, included in your brief uh, the the order from the realty hearing, which yes. took place, uh, I believe, on December the nineteenth. Right? Correct. Correct. It was between myself, myself and Marcello. Well, right. Correct. And, and this is the brief you presented at the hearing. Yes. Uh, I know it's unusual to uh, present. Uh, this is the first time I've seen an actual entire uh, brief. Uh, <coughs> the uh, evaluation part of it, uh, but you have included it in here, which is in its entirety. Is that so? Uh, it may not be an incomplete entirety, but everything that would be necessary for the business assessment appeal. Um, okay. So, in other words, we can ignore page, uh, if I can, we can, after page three, so 
uh, ignore from page four to and page five then. I'm not sure where you're getting with ignore. The realty cover page for the realty briefs shows the order number, shows the address, confirms the areas, confirms the age, anything that the panel may want to know. Um, and then on page five of our brief or three of the realty brief, it highlights that the areas are the same and the rent is the same as well. Okay. And then, but, but that is also included in your page one, is it not? Yes, it is. It's just double oh, okay. That's the same. Fair enough. Um, okay. Turning the page... Uh, 31 of your brief or 28 it says 31 in one area and then 28 of 28. It's the last page, sorry, of your it's presentation. The real brief. It's 28 of the PE brief. Right. Um, okay, so uh, have you inspected these comparisons, Mr. Paul? Um, the comparisons themselves have been in many over the years, but I didn't go and canvas them all for um this particular hearing fair enough uh, <clears throat> now let's deal with uh comparison number one uh what sort of uh you, i see the tendency here is realty and then it says f-i-t-n what building is this exactly? This is a good life fitness. It's in a big box store location. Typically, what we're looking at is big box store, slab on grade, steel construction, uh, uh, front glazing, similar to a dealership would have or nearest apple to orange comparable. Uh, I'm sure you know the car dealership uh, argument as well as the panel. Everyone's educated to hear today. Um, but <clears throat> this is a, a fitness uh a good life fitness in a retail location so so okay, that's my question so it's uh the the occupants here the occupant here is a uh, good life then right that's all i'm yeah. getting we yes. can we can we can cut to the chase very fast if you don't uh if you just answer my questions please sure. uh there's no need to elaborate uh, i just need some uh to for you to be succinct here in the process will go by really fast um so that's a good life uh on keniston um 14 the second comparison 1450 B Ellis Avenue what's in that property who who uh which tenant 14, is in that property 14 B Ellis Avenue is a Staples yes. Staples yes so that's a retail sort of office uh they 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 um they sell office equipment, papers, staples, like it says, whatever. Yeah, yep. stuff like that. Yep. Okay. Um, and that's on Ellis Avenue. Uh, 1250 St. James, what's in that property? Flying Squirrel Sports. It's a um, trampoline park located in a retail environment. Retail um, St. James. Okay. 1080 Naren Avenue. What is that? Salvation Army. That's a Salvation Army. So they all close there, use clothes. Uh... It's a Salvation Army. It'd be a thrift store. Thrift store, right. Yep. Um, 1000 St. James Street. That would be Ashley's Furniture. Again, furniture store, retail environment. Furniture store. Correct. Uh, 840 St. James. That would be a Michaels. Michaels. Yeah. And can you explain to the board what takes place in Michaels, please? Uh, again, um, there are an arts crafts um, type store. Um, so you go in there if you have uh, painting, sewing, um, seasonal stuff. Right. Thank you. 1425 Ellis Avenue. That would be Lazy Boy Canada or Lazy Boy. They sell furniture. Furniture store.
2195 Pamela Highway. Uh, that would be another Salvation Army thrift store. <laughs> Fifth, 550 Sterling Lion Parkway. FXR Riders, that would be um, a retail apparel store for obviously uh, power sports. Apparel store, clothing store. Yeah, yeah. Geared to um, obviously power sports. Right. Uh, 841 Leela. <coughs> uh, that would be Manitoba Liquor and Lotteries. So it would be um, a liquor mart. Uh... Elsie. Elsie. What would be the ceiling height in that one? Mm, probably about 22 feet or so. 22 feet? About that, yeah. I mean, I don't have it in front of me, but typically that'd be about right. From Joyce to uh, Datum and main floor. 22 seem... feet is more tantamount to a warehouse, is it not? When you walk into a liquor commission, does it seem like 22 feet high? They're typically high. I mean, it could be 18 feet. It could be 22 feet in the ground there. It's you don't know. Big... Well, you don't. You just don't know the the, the ceiling height in that one. If it's, a, if it's something that you require, I can get it for you. No, that's fine. I don't want you to look up anything. That's that's whatever evidence is presented here is good. Thank you. <laughs> um, twenty one ninety five Pemina Highway. What's in there? That would be a part source. Part source. Uh, Fifteen ninety six Ness Avenue. Dollarama. Dollarama. Uh, 1485 Portage Avenue. That would be EQ3, uh, the former location, not uh, where they moved into the mall now at, at Polo Park. So this is a Polo Park location. This is a this is a standalone building at Polo Park? Yeah, uh, out front. There was EQ3 out front prior to the moving okay. into the mall. So this would okay. be that. Fourteen fifty Ellis Avenue. That would be Sears Canada. Uh, there is a, a appliance uh, store. Uh, it would sell all their appliances. So. Okay. Sorry, I can I? Be... Sorry, Bellum. Did I lose my internet, or what happened there? Because I was. I last I heard was Dollarama. <laughs> And then I had to reconnect. Uh, it looks like it's your network. You are okay. my slow bandwidth on our end. Okay, so I'm going to stop my video. If that's okay. 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 But please confirm that you can still hear us. Yeah, I can hear you. The okay, last I heard was number 12 was a dollarama. Okay. Okay. Well, Mr. Chairman, I can go back to 13, uh, if I can ask Mr. Paul, number 13 again, if you can repeat that, please. That would be Sears Canada, it's an appliance store. Number 13? No, I yeah. believe that we're speaking of 1485 Portage Avenue for the member's benefit. That would, that's comparable number 12. Sorry. 1485 Portage Avenue is comparable sorry, number 13. Sorry, sorry, my, my mistake, I misread the line. Uh, 1485 Portage Avenue, that would be EQ3. And just to clarify, that's EQ3, their standalone building in front of Pool Park. It's not the actual mall itself where they moved into. Okay, thank you. And then finally, I don't believe the member had that 1450 Ellis Avenue. That would be Sears Canada. Uh, and applying for Sears. All right. Thank you. Thanks. So if I was just stop there for a brief moment here. So you don't know the um, the ceiling heights of any of your comp comparables here, do you? That was never been a factor that's been brought up at appeal. It's never been a factor that I would think to bring in. 
simply because uh, they're all retail. Uh, they're all big box steel frame construction, steel roof, steel walls, masonry walls in some cases, uh, slab on green construction, pretty bare bones, uh, retail environment, uh, retail area for parking. Uh, it's very similar to what the actual uh, car dealership market is. And most importantly, that is something that the board has, municipal board has highlighted in its past orders as where the market they're looking to go to, national franchise um, uh, retail is what they're looking for. Um, that is something that's been presented at hearing multiple times. The cycle for realty, I didn't include it today at the VA, but I can speak to it if you like. So these are why the comparables are here. And as you can see, when you go through all the comparables, we're doing each and individual areas within the city that have Car dealerships, St. James, Hamina, um, McPhillips, um, Regent, and then Sterling Park, obviously. Um, these are the nodes or clusters that you will, or, or strips, if you want to use that term for a car dealership. So these are the markets that were investigated and, and applying here today. So if you like, I can quickly go through the rest of the comparisons mm -hmm. if you like. No, 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 no. I, I'll be questioning on these comp comparables, Mr. Paul. So what I'm hearing here from you, Mr. Paul, today is that ceiling height does not matter when you're comparing the subject property to your comparisons. That's what I heard there. Is that correct? No, what, I'm, what you heard was... Well, that's what you said. Please let him finish the answer. I'm allowed to finish. These are retail, big box stores. They're all sell retail. They're all tenanted by them with the exception of uh, Good Life Fitness, which is simply occupying a retail location. All, none of those ceiling heights inhibit any kind of retail being sold there, or, or in this case here, uh, if you would need to, um, there's an element of service as far as the uh, car dealerships themselves. Uh, but as far as uh, height restrictions, their day-to-day -day use, there is no restrictions. Like none of these can't occupy that. That's by the definition of what they're being occupied by. So if you're suggesting that the industrial heights are maybe higher or lower is more appropriate, um, it's not an argument that's come up. If you want to make that argument, I'll listen to it. So if you want to have the rest of the comparables, we can do that. Hello? Yes, yes, we will. All right. um, I'm just trying to um, understand uh, your rationale here. Um, I don't, and forgive me, I don't seem to, uh, I'm not getting if you are saying that the occupants of the comparisons, it doesn't matter where they occupy, which building they occupy, or, or like I, I'm confused as to the relationship between the comparisons and the subject property. Are you saying that the subject property can very well be located in any of these comparisons, Mr. Paul? Um, I'll, I'll go through the full um, argument as far as um, car dealerships. There are no owner occupied. They're all owner occupied. There is no market out there um, to have first examine. This has been well documented in multiple municipal board orders. The market that the uh, municipal board has pulled from has been large national retail, uh, big box stores, grocery stores, things of that nature. That's where we're pulling our market from it is a economic substitution for what there isn't out there now the rationale behind that is is if these car dealerships didn't want to be owner occupiers anymore and they wanted to go into the bill into the marketplace and find a building that they could occupy have similar utility in a retail environment these are the rents that they would be initially looking at to be paying giving the buildup of car dealerships being higher than grocery stores or big box stores, which is essentially a steel frame roof, slab on great construction, small storage area in the back to pick you know, material up front once it gets loaded off the dock, so to speak. They would need a bigger build out. It would be a more expensive building and the ownership of that property would have to build more, would have to rent it for more to the car dealerships. That's in theory, obviously, with being a higher build out. But in this case here, we're simply using the most comparable orange to apple. Um, that's already been highlighted multiple times at the municipal board. Um, it was part of the real, uh, realty uh, uh, package that was presented at every single BCD hearing. Um, I'm not sure if you've seen it or not, or Altus has uh, informed you of it. 
Um, but that is the rationale that we're using. And that's why the, the, the comparables that we're using today are what they are. Mr. So Paul, you keep referring to car dealerships. Are we dealing with car dealerships today? What is a transcolor, transcona trailer sale a car dealership? It is a vehicle dealership, whether you want to use a car dealership, power sports dealership, uh, industrial service fleet uh, um, dealership, as there are some in the city as well. That's why we bracket them as, as a vehicle dealership. So that's what they are under the umbrella of. But obviously under that umbrella, some are fleet vehicles, some are industrial dealerships, some are RV dealerships, power sport dealerships, and that's what we're dealing with. So let me ask you this. So these are these are your comparisons. Can Transcona trailer sales be located in all of these comparisons? Have their products run their business in these comparisons, Mr. Cole? As far as an ideal, exactly the same on every single one. Obviously, there would be um, you would you would have to have a tenant fit for any kind of use, uh, any any kind of um, tenancy. So. What we're trying to point out is if you're going to occupy a steel frame building, which the subject property is, with rents from other areas and steel frame buildings, this is what they'd have to pay. So this is the most like and, and similar that we can apply to the subject property here today. Um, that's the nut and shell of so, it. Um, so you're speaking of a steel frame building now, and you're starting to confuse me. Is a steel frame building the same as your comparisons? Like... The what? How can you best describe your the uh, the building of thirteen thirty Dubal Road? How would that best be described? It's a steel frame building with a showroom up front, with a slab on. Okay, let me stop you there because you keep going on. It's a steel frame building. Good. Thank you very much. Does it have steel cladding? As far as. The, Does it have steel cladding? Because this is going to take forever, Mr. Paul. Mr. McCubbin, if you would just let Mr. Paul ask you, asked a question, please listen yeah. to the answer. Ms. Ms. Mr. Chairman, we, we will go, we'll definitely go on overtime, and I'm fine by that because I think he's he can answer my questions succinctly. I'm I'm not he's being very long-winded with just about every question that I ask him. And we can go on here until eight o'clock tonight if we have to, Mr. Chairman, but I don't see the need to. I would like him to be more succinct with his answers. I'm asking straightforward questions. We don't need to go on an elaborate explanation of, of, of with respect to answers. Is it a steel frame building? Is it a steel frame building, Mr. Paul? Howard, if you look at page 20, and you look at the roof system, there's steel cladding throughout. I'm sure there's some masonry, I'm sure there's some timber, but generally it's steel. And it's a so would you building. classify this as a butler type building then, Mr. Uh, Mr. Paul? The subject property. Is it a um, butler style building? If you let me finish, it's definitely not a Robertson. It may, if that's a trademark name you want to phrase it as, but there would be steel joists. There'd be slab on great construction. There again, there'd be uh, you know, walls surrounding the perimeter would, uh, would have to be either post and beam or steel. Um, it's your typical um, industrial retail building. It's older, yes. Uh, but as you go through the building itself and you look at the pictures of the building, that's exactly what it is. Can these buildings be engineered off site and put together tantamount to a mechano set, Mr. Polk? Uh, depends on what struct, depends on what uh, building method you're using. Robertson's typically are. But you would use uh, you would use uh, steel reinforcement underneath the slab to tie in the columns on the other either end. But I don't see that here. This is that quality of building. Um, typically, this would be built on site. I'm not sure why the construction method is coming up the question. It could be built on site. It can be carted in on a flatbed. Um, not sure why this is relevant. Uh, it, it's not for you to. <laughs> uh, Actually, I think it uh, is. Um, no, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. I, I think I would. I, I would just like you to answer succinctly, and we can get on with the matter here, Mr. Paul. Um, 
Mr. Chairman, okay. point of order. Point of order, please. I, I think I've... Um, let, please, I'll let, let Mr. Paul finish. Yes, okay. Mr. Paul. Point of order. Mr. Chairman, this comparable list that we've used, we went through entire weekly or, uh, hearing. Uh, the Altus has the complete list of the comps. Not sure why Mr. McCubbin doesn't have it here today. Um, as far as the order that I was speaking to, Altus has that entire package. Not sure if Mr. McCubbin reviewed it, but to say that now we have to be succinct when we've already provided that information to all this already, I, I'd like to move on with the hearing to more relevant question. I think. That, that's fair enough, Mr. Paul. Mr. McCubbin will get an opportunity to provide evidence as to whether this is a Butler building or a Robertson or why the construction matters uh, or why the construction types matter. And you will certainly have uh, some time to do that. If you have questions with respect to the comparables and how they either differ or are similar to the subject building, then I would ask that you focus on that. Okay, I will, Mr. Chairman, but I, I would like to ascertain that this is a hearing de novo, is it not? It is a hearing de novo, yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, Mr. Paul, 841 Leela. What's, uh, I believe you did say that's a, a LC, a liquor commission in that one. Is that uh, correct? Bear with me, I have to catch up back to you. Bear with me for a second. Uh, <coughs> um, 841 Leela, uh, that would be a Mark's work warehouse. Oh, Mark, sorry, Mark's work warehouse, clothing store. Yes, retail clothing. Okay, 817 St. James, that would be Pier One Imports. Sort of uh, retail furniture, yeah, odds and ends, decor. Odds and ends. Okay. Not strictly furniture, but kind of everything from the home. Right. 710 St. James. Hudson Bay Home. Home store. Home store. Thirty six seventy three Portage Avenue. Sport check. Sport check. Sporting goods. Retail. Um and this is in the uh, super center there, uh, the former uh Unicity Mall. Is that uh, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to okay. All righty. Uh 810 St. James. Best Buy. Uh, obviously, electronics. Okay. 1546 region. Petland. Petland? Yeah. Uh, 600 Empress. Uh, bed, bath, and beyond. So again, more of a um, home store. Eight thirty, St. James. That'd be Old Navy. Old Navy, a clothing store. Yeah, retail clothing. Six hundred Empress. Uh, this is six hundred Empress. Unit 120, which was yeah. different from uh, 600 Empress Unit 140. So just to be clear, uh, 600 Empress Unit 120 is Mark's work warehouse, or Mark's, Mark's now, I guess. They rebranded to Mark's now. So. <sighs> 550 Sterling Lion Parkway, number 24. River City Sports, so sporting apparel, sporting apparel, realty, or retail. Uh, again, number 25, 550 Sterling Lion Parkway. It's a different unit. Unit number three, that would be structural to limited, structural, um, their furniture and accessories for, this, for the home.
And uh, the final 550 there, uh, unit two, what would uh, that? that That would be a Dollarama. Dollarama. Sixteen ten Region Avenue. That'd be a good life fitness. That's a good life. <coughs> and finally, uh, Unit One Five Fifty Sterling. That'd be Buclair Home. Sorry, Buclair Home. So a home good store. Home home good store. All right, thank you very much for that. And uh, okay, so we have 20 comparisons. What would be your best comparison, Mr. Uh, Paul, for uh, 1330 Dougal Road, the property that we're dealing here with today? As far as um, the comparison would obviously be the Regent ones, that's close in location to Regent. But what we're trying to do is look at the general city as a whole. Um, and, and treat the property uh, type class with you know, with uh, with equity. So um, in this case here, region would be the closest uh, retail node. Um, that's what you would have here. You just said something there. You're trying to treat the property type class with equity. Is, is that correct? Did you just say that? That's right. Okay. So are you speaking of like in, in a context of um, mass appraisal? I'm not sure what you're getting at here as far as uh, are you are you questioning the model and the rental rate that came out on this particular property or are you treat are you asking the general VCD rents that were applied? Um, as far as equity, I try to go out and I look in the marketplace and I assign a rent that's appropriate, I check the model, and this is what you see here. We see here that the retail environment, uh, you're hovering around $18, $17 in the low end for, um, for these type of properties. So when we have a rent that we have it here, which is taking into account uh, the age of the building, modeled, I believe it was $12, and um, bear with me here, I'm moving around a bit today. Working digitally today. So obviously at $12.93, we see a discounted rent down from the marketplace that they would be in. That takes into account the age, it takes into account the location. Uh, I see an equitable rent here at $12.93. I see no reason to adjust it. So getting back to the property type class with equity. So you are not looking at specific properties that would be good comparisons in 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 the form of in, in the form of location construction ceiling height floor area you're just looking at a property type class is that what you is this what you're telling me we brought in nearly 30 comparables we reviewed the marketplace for retail uh Comparables, which indicate from the municipal board what we should be using. And again, I can give you the order if you don't have that, but I can read from the order since I can give verbal information. Um, no, 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 I don't need you to read from the order, Mr. Let's just, I'm asking the questions here. I, I'll, I'll, well, I'm I'll, trying to answer it, Mr. McKevin, but you but seem to. We don't need you to read from the, this is a hearing de novo. We don't need you to read from the order. Mr. Um, McCubbin, to be fair, you asked Mr. Pohl on what basis he assigned or on what basis he assembled these comparables. If there is some relevant information as to his uh, comparisons with respect to assembling those comparisons, then you have asked that question. Okay, fair enough, Mr. Chairman. I let him uh, let him go ahead and. Uh... Yep, Mr. Pohl, please. please. I'll, yep. I'll just try and take this down a little bit. It is from Order A, zero two. Two through two three. This is a there was about four appeals with this order for VCDs or car dealerships if you want to phrase it like that. 
Um, this order has been, oh, as part of our retail package, which included all our comps and included uh, this order in whole. So again, um, to gauge what type of marketplace we should be looking at, because these are all in our occupied and they don't have any rents, uh, this has been raised and brought before. Um, so wordage is exactly quote on page 11 of the order, as there is not a specific category designated for auto mall or car dealerships, vehicle dealerships. The board has considered characteristics of various classifications to determine its similarities and differences to miscellaneous retail and such retail as chain restaurants, supermarkets, discount stores, department stores. The board accepts that the argument of auto malls and the uh, agglomeration of auto dealerships located in different sectors of the city result in auto malls having similar characteristics to regional retail with national rather than local tenants, so no small proprietors. The board is satisfied that subject is similar, although not identical to large national and international retail properties located near in regional shopping facilities. We are grabbing exactly the market that they indicated. Now, granted, this is an older order, plus 20 years, but this is the best order that we have to indicate what is similar and what we should be looking at. Um, so that's where the marketplace that we selected, I selected, we're pulling from, and that's what we're using. Thanks for that. Is um, it's a subject property, a national entity? Transcola trailer, no, they, they'd be local. It's not, okay. So you can't look at your, you can't look at these 20 comparisons. What you're telling me here, Mr. Paul, is you have 28 comparisons here. You can't point out one to me, which would be best comparable to the subject property. Is that what you're telling me? They're I all comparable in some respect. They should all be considered. And they range in rents from a high of, so I can see $25.50 to a low of $15, or sorry, $14 or $12.90. So yeah. they're all comparable to the subject property. Is that this your answer? Is, this is the marketplace in the, in, the, in the locations that all car dealerships, vehicle dealerships are located in. Now, in this case here, we have a strip. Um, on this Dougal Road, we have, uh, <laughs> sorry, everyone went away. Uh, is everyone there? Yep, still yep. here. Yep. This... Sorry, the screen went black. <laughs> I apologize, I'm screen here. went black. Okay, we're all good. All right, so along this strip, you have uh, GNR, uh, you got Transplanted Trailers, you have uh, uh, Winnipeg Sport and Leisure, you have about three major properties along here that service and sell the same thing. Power Sports Goods, uh, uh, RV RV related, uh, you know, boats, uh, the whole product line from all of it. So this little strip here is servicing a retail environment, sales, what they're selling, and then they're servicing it. Uh, and obviously in this case here, uh, there's a storage element and you can see uh, towards the back of these properties that they store for the winter. So um, that's the most uh, comparable that we have, uh, comparables that we have as far as Regent. I think what you're getting to is and pardon me if I'm, I've heard this argument before from all of this, is that why are we not using industrial rents in industrial areas? Um, simply because these properties wouldn't be located in the back for an industrial uh, uh, area. They wouldn't sell anything back there. So that's why we're not using that. Um, there is a municipal board uh, case uh, coming up for both uh, Condominium, standalones, and periphery. Uh, in this case, this will fall under the latter. Um, and if there's any deviation from that, we'll investigate it further once we're at the municipal board. But for the time being, this is the most uh, reasonable set of comps that we selected. So, those are all the questions I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Ms. Nesbitt. Have you any questions? I don't. We've talked. We've talked a lot about the comparables in length, so I don't want to go into those anymore. Uh, Mr. Pohl, on your page one, um, you've you've brought forward a subject lease. 
information. What relevance does that have to the? That was just on the INE. That's not. I pointed that out. It, it doesn't exist. It's a book rent. Um, these okay. are all. This is on our occupied. It's been confirmed on our field multiple times. Okay, so it's not relevant at all. You're telling me, so I can ignore it. No, no, you can ignore <laughs> it. That's why I hope. That's why I highlighted in yellow when I spoke to it earlier. Um, most car dealerships uh, or automotive dealerships, power sport dealerships, industrial dealer, whatever you want to call it, they all have book rents uh, usually on their IMEs. So in this case, this is one. Okay, and you said you did inspect the property. And I've been this property as a customer for years. Okay. And was was it you who took the pictures? No, I did not take the pictures. That was an inspection done by another assessor. That was just a uh, stock. Okay. On. Okay. So it really is a property that's got some different looks to it, right? Yeah. There's that retail piece, which sure, is similar to lots of other retail areas, right? And then there's a small office area in the back. Yeah, if you walk in, like if you walk through the doors to the to the right, there's the showroom area where they have all, you can go in in each and every one of the little uh, display models they have for RVs. Uh, but if you walk straight in, that's the general um, retail area where you buy your, your things you need towards yeah. the back of the parts. And at the back of the parts, uh, you can get servicing. Uh, okay. Like I said, when there's winterization, you, they, they, they winterize your trailer pull it on site they take it from you and then they store it in the back so okay. one element that's not under appeal here today is again kind of shows it on the pictures past the rule number is where the money flows from the storage of, of our piece right so, you indicated that the storage piece was on a different role i think i heard you say store them on a different role but obviously the right. dealership is up front so that's where the money right. would be back to us. okay and then i think i heard you say and maybe you can just confirm when we were talking about the comparables <laughs> Um, you indicated that these are all large or big box national, national, international, probably national retail type yeah. premises. Um, most of these or all of these would be standalone. Um, yeah, no, they're all uh, as far as sorry, can you rephrase that? Standalone yeah, are they in... standalone um, standalone properties or are any parts of malls? No, I didn't use any mall rents. Like there's like there's no like I pull a park. There's a like the EQ3 is a standalone building. Yeah. Park. I didn't yeah. use any mall rents. It wouldn't be appropriate. Okay. Um, okay. Um, now I you did say something about the rents. These rents are all higher. I see than the rent that you've applied. And I think I heard you say that it was dis the model rent has been discounted taking into account the age location of the subject property um, would the construction have anything to do with that also or well well the age first of all it's 1997 but also yeah. the location um, yeah we don't have too many twenty dollar rents out this way um, mm -hmm. so okay hard to find that obviously that's something I would have in my mind's eye even though you're from Regent which is your next Obviously, Breach would be just over the overpass and on the other side of the rail yard. Um, but that wouldn't be right. So when the Dougal versus friends. yeah, the Dougal yeah. versus Regent sort of area, yeah. And the okay. other, the other, the other ones that pull into mind's eye is right across the street. You have an industrial park, but that industrial park rents would not be appropriate to put it on here because if you put this in the back of an industrial park, no one would be going to it. Um, it wouldn't work in the bar in the back of a buried. Uh, industrial park whether it be this one or another one so when the municipal board indicated uh what type of in what what type of real estate that we should be pulling our rents from that's what we're looking at. so um in this okay. case here that will be looked at um just being fulsome that will be looked at um once we go to uh our test cases and we look at the periphery which is the third in line of, of the three um if the, if there needs to be an adjustment made or or, or should we go with more of industrial flavor rent for these particular types of properties uh maybe not this one under appeal but there's there are some uh we will look at that once we explore the element of the marketplace and we'll be so in this point we have the one and we we, we feel we've assessed it properly at uh, just a shade under 13 dollars okay thank you very much mr cole i have no further questions mr chair thank you uh, ms knight my questions were asked and answered thanks 
I have one question with respect to there a series of questions, perhaps with respect to the test cases to which you alluded. For this cycle, there are three test cases being advanced to the municipal board as a result of agreement between uh, the city assessment and taxation and the uh, applicants. Is that correct or am I hearing that correctly, Mr. Pohl? Yeah, it spans multiple cycles, though. Um, not for this particular cycle, it just uh, it hasn't been heard yet. Uh, it was to be heard in the spring of this year, but ownership changed hands. Uh, and the agent that's now taking over it is, uh, we were looking to the fall of this year, but I'm not even sure if it would be at that point. What typically we're going to look for, and it's pretty well spoken to, is if we can get all the information from the Unit 90, which is in Point West, it's a condominium, if we get a good order from that where everyone's sort of happy, um, we don't need any other rationale that maybe the other test cases might not need uh, be done. Uh, but after that, if, if we still do, then the second one will be the standalone retail or a standalone dealership on a retail node. And then if we if we still need further, then the industrial or periphery type uh, property uh, will be done. And that's where this one will particularly go under. So. so this this property then would be in the third category of the retail slash industrial is that uh, is this is this property one of the test cases uh no um i don't believe so um i don't believe uh sorry you're asking me uh I don't okay know. no and and you know what i it's uh, more for my curiosity not for anything else but I it, it look would it be a property like similar this. to this i can look it up if you like more. no that's fine thank you very much uh it's not uh not necessary Thank you. Uh, I don't have anything further, Mr. Uh, yes. Mr. Chairman, I, ha I have redirect uh, uh, from a question uh, from Nesbitt, uh, Paul City Assessor. Okay. If I may. Um, Mr. Paul, uh, Ms. Nesbitt uh, asked you uh, with respect to a standalone situation for your comparisons. Um, are all of your comparisons standalone properties or are they uh, conjoined with other units? Within a, a retail setting, none of them are in a none of them are in a mall like a full park, St. Patel, a KP kind of thing. Um, but some of them are in uh, um, uh, strip malls, which would be fine to be used there. Are big box stores? They're not a mall type setting. So uh, most of them are standalone, meaning the individual building itself with nothing attached. But some of them are strip malls, which um, are still more, more than appropriate. Can you point out which ones are standalone, please? Uh, you'll have to bear with me here if you want to go down that road. I got no problem with it, but give me one moment. Fourteen fifty Ellis is standalone. Uh, which which comp is that? Sorry, uh, Staples. Name. Sorry, number two. Staples. Number two. Sorry, number two is a standalone. Sorry, go ahead. And obviously, the good life. Uh, the comp number one is standalone. Okay. Twelve fifty St. James is standalone. Okay. 
apologize, there's a furniture store on the other side of 1250 St. James. It's under the same building, but there is a separate uh, it's, um, tilt up T-beam design. There is a separate uh, a separate party wall between the two. So it is standalone, but it does buttress up against, but they are individual buildings. Okay. So, let, um, let, let, let's get down to the de definition of standalone then. I, I want you to, in my in my view, Mr. Paul, standalones are buildings that are surrounded with land. It's an, it's an island on to itself on a parking lot, let's say. So this is then not a standalone, the one that you just that described. Is, it's it's that adjoined is to a different building. Is that so? It's adjacent to another building. It's not is it adjacent or does it share a wall with another building? It's, it's, it's adjacent to it, yes. If that's what you're getting at. Does it share a wall with the building, Mr. Paul? I just said that. Okay. Well, thank you. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, if this is an exercise that we're going to have to do, then we're going to have to take some time to go through it. I'm fine with it, but you need to give me the amount of opportunity to actually do this. This line of question has never been done. And okay. Well, I'm, I'm not sure what uh, what purpose is here, and we are getting far beyond. Uh, it's not redirect, it's re-examination at this point. Redirect well, is something considerably different. Uh, you did have the opportunity to ask these questions earlier. Um, you did not. Uh, I understand your definition of what a standalone building is. Uh, that is something that you can certainly argue or summarize with. Okay. If there are a couple you specifically wish to point out as not being standalone and therefore not being appropriate for our consideration, perhaps you could focus on those. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Maybe yeah. I'll do that. Yeah. Okay. Th thanks, thanks for that. So, um, so 10, 1080 Naren is standalone. Uh, well, then it, we don't have to go. I, we don't have to go through We don't have to go through it. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Paul. Thank um, Ms. Paul. Uh, yeah, I'm waiting for it to be delivered. Oh. oh. Yeah, Mr. Covenant asked yeah, for a glass okay. of water, so we're going dry here. Okay. Uh, Is it possible okay? to take a five minute break, Mr. Chairman? Yes, we can yep. take a five Thank minute you. break. We'll no, right Thank you. We'll call the meeting back to order. Uh, Mr. McCoven, your <laughs> presentation, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I can get you to turn to page two of my presentation, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just to refresh the applicant is transcode the trailer sales. The premise address is 1330 Dougal Road. And uh, correct roll number, I do believe it is 2507 is the roll number. And the premise area, Mr. Chairman, is 21,574 square feet. The current annual rental values. 327,780. We're asking for it to be reduced to $243,000. Uh, Mr. Paul did a very good job of describing uh, what goes on in the uh, subject property, Mr. Chairman. So I wouldn't, I'm not gonna, I'll spare you that. Uh, it, it's an RV type uh, dealership. Uh, it it um, it's seasonal sells seasonal products, not cars. Um, if I can turn your attention to page four, you can see the building that we're dealing with, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's best described as a recreational vehicle dealership and service center situated on four acres of uh, M1 zone land on the south side of Dula Road, just east of Lajimode here. Uh, it has a single access point off of Dougal Road. So in other words, if you're on Dougal Road, you have to actually uh, come down a service road to get to this property. If you miss the service road, you've missed your turn in, as far as I can remember. I've been to this dealership also many times uh, in the past, including this year, just a month ago. Uh, the subject building was originally constructed in 1995. Uh, that piece that was constructed, Mr. Chairman, is up and down uh, the page on the, the uh, if you look at the photograph on page four, it's the, the longer portion was constructed earlier uh, with uh, an addition added on to the end of the building, uh, 4898 square feet addition. 
in 2005. So it was built in two stages. This type of construction, Mr. Chairman, uh, this type of a building is a steel frame building, as you've heard, but it's also steel cladded with insulative panels, a very simple structure and very simple to put together, put, to, put together much faster than dealing with a uh, masonry type constructed building. Um, parts can be engineered uh, on off site and brought to the site, as you've heard, and <laughs> assembled section by section. It's very easy also, Mr. Chairman, with this type of a property to put an addition on uh, on whichever end you would like. As you can see, uh, there's a hip joint to the L-shaped part, uh, the smaller portion, and uh, you just tuck it into the roof line and, and you have sort of a hip, uh, a hip configuration there with uh, with, with uh, steel trusses for the roof and the same same construction as the remainder of the building. Uh, you pour your concrete slab and you put the building up. Very easy to construct, quick to uh, assemble, and can be assembled off site. Uh, rigid steel frame building. Now, just to, just to give you an idea of what goes on in here, and you've heard, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, this being a dealership, and it's being compared to car dealerships and whatnot throughout the city. And um, what I can tell you, Mr. Chairman, is that this is a recreational vehicle type dealership. They are uh, subject to uh, the weather, in a sense, uh, when visiting uh, one of these sites, I was told that uh, they can they can hang on to product, and the product the product is saturated throughout their property, in and out of their buildings. Um, it, it's not like a car dealership, where especially today, as you know, uh, you almost you, you essentially have to place an order to buy a new vehicle. Because this is uh, an RV, uh, this is not a car, it's not a, a people's uh, general mode of transportation. It's a superfluous thing to their lifestyle in a sense, where, where, where a car is more essential. Uh, people can take it or leave it. It's a recreational vehicle dealership. And uh, so let's not confuse it with a car dealership, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I asked whether... Uh, you know, recent my recent visit to 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 uh, to one of these uh, dealerships, um, you know, brought about they have product and they're in transition right now. They said, "I wish uh, the snow would just go." We're waiting here, and there's nothing happening. Nothing happens sometimes for months and then in a transition period. There. No one will buy a snowmobile right now unless it's deeply discounted, Mr. Chairman. And what I was told is that we're not going to discount discount our product. We'll hang on to it and sell it next year. So it's it's this is totally different from a car dealership. Just to just to paint a picture of the board's mind, we're dealing here with something that's totally different than cars and dealerships in general. Uh, turning your attention to page six, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> the assessor has applied a base rent of 1293 per square foot for the 21,574 square feet of premise area. As you've heard, the subject property was owner occupied within related corporation as of April the 1st, 2021. Therefore, market research for comparable rents was undertaken and the following comparisons were found. Now, I'm not sure whether this is a good time to, because I will be going through these comparisons, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I did provide uh, supporting evidence in the form of nothing new in terms of evidence, just photographs 
of the properties I used on page six. If I may enter this as evidence, I'll do so. If not, uh, you I can refer to it as evidence. Uh, refer, this is, yeah. uh, you've all got a copy of this. These are the uh, series of pictures, seven pages of pictures. Uh, it's under number, the third item under uh, 1330 Dougal. Ms. Knight, Ms. Ms. Nesbitt. Yeah, I'm good. Mr. Paul. Okay. Then let's proceed, please. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So uh, the table below, I will be referring to that, Mr. Chairman. Uh, comparison number one, two, three, and four are all right across Dougal from the subject property. So it's right across the street, better access than the subject property. You can enter this property directly from Dougal. You do not have to go down a service road. First comparison, 5448 square feet. Uh, the subject property, uh, sorry, the comparison was built in 1980, Mr. Chairman. And just for reference, uh, we're dealing with a 1997 effective age of the subject property. So it's a 97, and this one is a 1980. So it's older than the subject property. Uh, it's smaller, significantly smaller than subject property, the same type of building, Mr. Chairman. And uh, you can see the lease start and lease end dates there, June of 18 to May of 23 least for 895 square foot. And you can see the wall heights, Mr. Chairman, 18 to 20 feet. Uh, <clears throat> give you an idea. Um, CT rentals, a rental uh, place much similar to the subject property. That's the type of business that goes on in that unit, Mr. Chairman. And if you can, uh, if I can refer you to the photographs, uh, page one of item three uh, is 1325 Dougal. You look on top, the, the, the photograph on top, you see access to the property right directly off of Dougal. And in behind the property, uh, in between the two buildings out front, that's where that's located, Mr. Chairman. Uh, if you look at the uh, the aerial photograph, you can see the subject property at the bottom, Mr. Chairman, that L-shaped configuration uh, building uh, just below the red dot. That's the subject property. The comparisons I'm using, Mr. Chairman, are just across the street. Similar wall heights. Comparison number two, 5904 square feet, Mr. Chairman, with a lease start date of uh, 20, and sorry, June of 20, and at least end of May of 22. Six dollars and fifty cents a square foot. Zoned M1. Comparison number three in the same complex. Eight thousand four hundred eleven square feet. May the twentieth. Sorry, uh, May of twenty twenty is the lease start month, and. It spans the reference period to April the 22nd for $8 a square foot, Mr. Chairman. And finally, in that configuration and that, it, that comparison right across the street, Mr. Chairman, 3,525 square feet, January of 2017 is the lease start to May of 22nd lease and $6.50 a square foot. We go down to comparison number five, Mr. Chairman. 2049 Dougal Road, 
It was constructed in 1976, older than the subject property, a little older than the subject property. Uh, relative size, though, 24,720 square feet. So it's very similar in size. June the 1st, 2020 is the lease start date. May the 31st, 2023 is the lease end date. $4.25 a square foot for this building. Much and very similar to the subject property, Mr. Chairman. And if I can turn your attention to item three that was submitted. And see a photograph of that property actually on the second page. It should say, the heading should say 2049 Dougal. The photograph, it has access right off of Dougal. You can see it's much similar in nature to the subject property, Mr. Chairman, just down the street from the property, from the subject property, similar type constructed building. Used for warehouse purposes. The photograph or the aerial photograph below shows the subject property as it sits on the land surrounding it. Uh, and, and the land uh, attributable to this uh, property, uh, the land to building ratio, Mr. Chairman, is 6.5 to very similar to that of the subject property. So let's, let's look at this as a comparison. If the subject property, if, if someone wanted to locate a dealership on Dugo Road, that have very similar, uh, that has a very similar building with enough land to store, and this is important, Mr. Chairman, enough land to store the product. This would be a good comparison. This one is at 425, Mr. Chairman. 141 the base. This is in the industrial park, Mr. Chairman in the subject's backyard. This one is a multi-tenant situation. The one before is single tenant, very much the same as the subject property. 141 debates is part of a multi-tenant situation. It's 16,000 square feet, not the best comparison, but I will show it anyway. It is, it's at six dollars <laughs> a square feet, February, 2021 is the lease start. January 2024 is the lease end date. And you see the relative ceiling heights, Mr. Chairman. Much, very similar to that of the subject property. Uh, that building is located on page three of item three. You will see it, uh, the top photograph shows uh, the building itself. from the base and uh, the aerial photograph shows its location on the site. Seventy Duran, 17,230 square feet. You, you can say it's somewhat similar in size to subject property built in 1981. Uh, Net rental rate of $6.50 a square foot, Mr. Chairman, for this industrial building. June 2021 is the lease start date. January 2028 is the lease end date. Ceiling heights, 20 feet. And that is located. So you can have a look at it, Mr. Chairman. And the following page is headed 7 Duran. You can see the building and you can see its relative location on site. Uh, 275 the Bates, 17,280 square feet. July 2019, lease start date. June 2024, lease end date, $7 a square foot, 26 feet ceiling heights. 
Again, in the same complex, 275 debates. 22,000, very similar in, in size to the subject property. January 2020 is the lease start. December 2022 is the lease end and it rented for 795 square foot. So of those, Mr. Chairman, we have an average of 685 and a median of 650. Uh, auto use around the city. We have a property at 150 Warman Road. I'm not sure if I showed that. I probably didn't. It's a relatively small property. I'm not putting very much weight on this, Mr. Chairman. But nevertheless, it's in the, it's very close to the subject property, industrial building, similar in nature, June 2013 to May 2023, $11.50. Uh, and that's a, a relatively small building compared to the subject property with a uh, 16 foot ceiling height. 440 Oak Point Highway. That is part of item three, if you can look at it in item three of the presentation, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Connection Western Star, it's a semi-dealership, truck dealership, and it has a service center attached to it also. 1984, 22,000 square feet. January of 2000, and the end date of that lease is August the 21st. Sorry, August 2021, $13.18 a square foot. Now, Mr. Chairman, this is more relatable to a car dealership. People go here all the time. Truck break down, trucks break down all the time on the street. They go into this dealership. This is a well-used property. This is what I would consider a dealership. This is an actual truck dealership. It's not a recreational vehicle. It's used continuously throughout the year, probably more so in the winter time with breakdowns. Much nicer building, better location than the subject property. <clears throat> Comparison number 10 on St. Anne's Road, smaller building. I'm not Placing very much weight on that. That's at $19.80 a square foot, Mr. Chairman. Uh, ceiling heights of 17 feet. Uh, very small compared to the subject property. So is 819 Logan Avenue, comparison number 12. Uh, 676 Provence, comparison number 13. All very small compared to subject property. Uh, 120 King Edward, however, <laughs> built in 1970. 15,000 square feet in size. Um, March 2018, lease start date. March 2023, lease end date. $8.50 a square foot, Mr. Chairman. And if you look at where that is located, for that type of a property, for that type of a use, it's located right across from the Autopack Center, on King Edward. That's on the last page of my item three uh, presentation. You can see the red cliff construction of the building. You can see a ramp. It has a raised floor system in there, Mr. Chairman, so the cars drive in and they repair cars within this property. Uh, good location, very good location. Lots of traffic going by. You can get into this site. Uh, $8.50 a square foot, Mr. Chairman, for this building. And smaller than the subject property. 20 foot ceiling heights. These are the comparisons that I've chosen and we've chosen at Altus to compare to the subject property and the properties in the general vicinity that we're dealing here today with, Mr. Chairman. 
So after looking at the, the properties that I've just addressed, based on the above and considering the site-specific attributes of the property, no doubt it has some extra land, Mr. Chairman. It does have to have that, that land to store inventory, uh, including the location of the subject property, an April 1st, 2021 market rent of not more than $9 per square foot should be applied. So our base rent, Mr. Chairman, is $194,166 or $9 a square foot. And I urge you to look at the comparisons that are on Google and specifically and especially the comparison, Mr. Chairman, that's a 2049 Google road. No adjustment for location needed. No adjustment for building type needed. Similar use. Page seven shows the calculation, Mr. Chairman, of the annual rental value, 21,574 square feet at $9 a square foot equals $194,166. Added to that, the occupancy costs or cost to occupy, we don't have uh, a disagreement with that, Mr. Chairman. We arrive at a value of 243,000 even. <coughs> I ask the board to reduce the annual rental value for the subject property to $243,000. Thank you. I'm open to questions. Mr. Pohl, questions? Yes, I do. Um, just before we get going, um, did you prepare these comparables yourself? Mr. Chairman, I did not. I had a chance, however, Mr. Chairman, to review extensively the evidence that Altus prepared, and I agree with it. I concur with the evidence here today. Okay. So you're aware that Altus at the realty hearing was asking for $9.46 based on the exact same comparables, which equates to $204,046. Why do you differ from what Altus presented at real? if it's exactly the same comparables and exactly the same information. I inspected the property, Mr. Chairman. I inspected the comparisons. I looked around and my judgment is that $9 a square foot is actually being very generous. If, a, if someone was to rent this building out to get $9 a square foot for this building, Mr. Chairman, they would be very lucky. Okay. That was my conclusion. Okay, let's move on to your comparables <laughs> one through four. Uh, if you've had the chance to extensively review and, and review with Altus themselves, uh, these should be no, uh, no issue for your answer. What is the uh, tenant for, thir or for your comparable number one, 1325 Dougal? CMT rentals. It's a rental outfit. So you are aware that they are owner occupied, they own the building. Pardon me. You are aware that they are owner occupied. I presented this. I are, this are you presenting that as evidence, or do you have rebuttal evidence to that effect, Mister? I believe that was just a question. Are you aware that they are owner occupied? That was the question, Mister. The information we have, Mister Chairman, is this is a bona fide rental comparison. They may be owner occupied. I suspect that Mr. Paul will, will produce uh, evidence if they're owner occupied. Moving on to your comparable number two at 1325, which is 9,000 or uh, 1,504 square feet. What is that tenancy? Sorry, which comparison are you speaking of? Number two. Number two, 5,904 square feet? Or right. did you say 15? You said 15,000. 5904, your second comparable. Oh, okay. That's Dave Cop Steel. And they are miscellaneous steel manufacturer, sale, and fab. Correct. What does that have to do with selling anything related to vehicles? Mr. Chairman, I'm producing, I, I, I'm not looking at the type of businesses that are going on. This is the this is the problem we're having here. I'm looking at a building <laughs> that the subject property and the business can be located in. I'm not comparing business to business. I'm looking at a viable alternative for the subject property comparison-wise. 
I'm not pitting business to business. I'm not comparing uh, the financial aspects of businesses here, Mr. Chairman. I'm looking at location, business size, and viability to run the same operation. I don't care how much money they make, Mr. Chairman. I don't care what type of businesses run out of these, uh, of these uh, premises. All I care about is the four walls, the roof and the floor, and the type of building that my comparisons are. If I'm allowed to continue, your comparable number four, that is also Dave Cobb Steel, correct? That is correct, yes. 35, 25 square feet. You and, are aware, and, and you are aware that the industrial loading, the electrical loading for a steel fab to run the machinery, welding, shears, brakes, racking, crane, everything would be a great, greater load. You need a different, um, you need a different electrical system versus what you could get away with in an RV center. Oh yeah, you would need a, hev a heavier phase, Mr. Chairman, that's for sure. So that's this is an industrial right. building, an industrial use, a heavy industrial use, which yep. wouldn't what the RV dealership is suited for. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't term it heavy industrial. I would just term it industrial. I would say it's even light manufacturing, Mr. Chairman. It's not okay. heavy industrial. Um, which is your comparable number three? What is the tenant there? Area four eleven square foot comparable. GNR Travel Center. Much similar to the subject property. And GNR Travel Center is just down the street, correct? Yeah. yeah, and they have some and they have some property located here. Yes. So what do they it's use this similar. property? What do they use this eighty four hundred or so square foot CRU for? I believe they use it for storage, Mr. Chairman. So it is a storage versus uh is it cold storage? Um I believe it's heated. And obviously that'd be climate control to the point where you would store your 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 day-to-day -day use of your vehicles, or if you're gonna store some inside and pay a certain rate, you'd be climate control where you wouldn't be heating it to a comfortable office level or or, or working level for an industrial building. It would be climate control to <laughs> just for freezing. Yeah, and that and that may very well be uh so uh nevertheless, it is a heated building, Mr. Chairman. You can turn up or down the heating within the building. Okay. Given that those are your main comparisons right next to the subject property, uh, the rest of the properties that you see under your industrial use, none of these are sales and service related. And they're more obviously industrial. Uh, none of them are sales and service, Mr. Chairman, with the exception of the one on that I've mentioned, uh, the one that's uh, on Oak Point Highway. I'm, I'm just speaking to the industrial. Sorry? I'm just speaking to the industrial bracket, the top. Um, oh, the top. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, yes, that's correct. Okay. That's correct. All right. Yeah. Those are the only questions I have in regards to the comps. Uh, the other ones you've highlighted are, are what they are. Um, I'll address the rest in summation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Knight, questions? Yeah, just a couple. Um, first off, are you appealing the city's realty decision? Yes, we are. Okay. And your two, your 440 Oak Point Highway, you said was very similar in that it's truck sales and that um, it's a dealership. It works on truck breakdowns, break, cars break down all the time. <laughs> but more busy in the winter, you said. Is that correct? I said it's similar in size, Mr. Chairman. The type mm -hmm. of business is totally different. It's more similar to a car dealership, Mr. Chairman, I believe I said. And mm -hmm. yes, uh, it's a truck dealership uh, that carry, carry out repairs for semis. And it's, I believe it said it's in a better location than the subject property. So then you were also talking about this property, saying that it's a, you can take or leave an RV, but you really need a car, if I got that part right. And that, you know, uh, they sell snowmobiles in the winter, but once snowmobile season is over, nothing really happens till RV season. Is that what you're saying? 
That's correct. There is a little bit of a downtime, I'm told, until uh, changeover happens. People don't start looking for sale trailers until, uh, you know, the, the snow is gone, people are ready to go camping, and, and then the activity starts, Mr. Chairman. And okay. uh, that is, could is be that, independent. Has Sorry. that been proven by the books of uh, Transcona trailer sales? Pardon me? You see that in the books that they keep of the sales that they do at Transcona Trailer Sales? I'm not privy to the books and the sales, and I'm not valuing the business, Mr. Chairman, of this property. So you got that information from the owners from of that owners business? Of or Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then um, 120 King Edward Street, you're using on the, on the auto use portion. You One. said that would be very similar. Yeah, that building's 1970 built. So if it was a 1997 age, what rental value would you give to that? Sorry, 120 King Edward. You're mm -hmm. Comp 14. Comp 14, thank you. Sorry, can I have the question again, please? So Comp 14 is a 1970 age building with an $8.50 rent at 15,000 square feet. Right. Our property is much substantially bigger and substantially newer. So what comp, what price in today's, if you were assessing this property today at an equal basis, would you give to that rent? So am I, if, if I can, if I can understand this, Mr. Chairman, so are, are you trying to say if this building was a similar vintage as a subject Correct. property? Correct. Is, okay. What I can tell you, Mr. Chairman, that this building is very serviceable. It's been kept up and maintained very well. And you, you can have a span of age where if a building is maintained very well, the utility is still there. There may be, if it was, you may find a, a bump up of a dollar, a dollar fifty in rent, not much more than that. But then again, we have to look at the location of this property, much more superior than the subject property, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Much more. And my, my other question would be uh, when you're looking at square foot, a smaller square foot building gains more dollar per rent than a larger or a larger square square foot building gains more than a smaller? Well, Mr. Chairman, based on the economy of scale, all things being equal, a larger building will rent for less per square foot okay. than a smaller building, all things being equal. And that's the economy of scale. We deal with it all the time in appraisal work. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Nesbitt. Questions? Um, no, Mr. Mr. McCubbin, you indicated, I heard you say, that your comparables, you're looking for similar use. So you talked about the auto use around the city as being a similar use, but not really, because these are really car type dealerships or service instead of RVs. But with respect to these industrial leases, where's the similar use? Or are you just looking at similar well, types of buildings? Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, exactly. I'm looking at similar types of buildings in very similar location, similar ceiling heights. For example, Comparison number five, 2049 Dougal Road. Very similar in nature to subject property. We can store RVs. We can do some work. We can have outside storage in that property. Almost identical in size to the subject property, Mr. Chairman. Renting for $4.25 a square foot. That's the type Mr. Of McCubbin, do any of these... Do any of your industrial leases have a retail component? A retail component? Mm -hmm. um, the ones on the set across the street at 1325 do, yes. The one that's uh, at 2049 Dougal Road, that one is actually uh, 
a storage warehouse with no retail component per se. Um, you can you can uh, look at. Uh, just bear with me, please. We can say the one on uh, King Edward has a retail component. People go there on a regular basis. If you want to look at his retail, there's a front office. They go there to fix their cars. Much the same as a dealership would, uh, would accept someone have their RV to need to fix. That's a type of a retail component. Um, okay. Retail what in a sense, uh, not, uh, in this case, not selling product, servicing, uh, retail servicing. Okay, um, thank, thank you. Um, what does the column percent finish mean? In that your is a percentage finish within the building itself. And what does that mean? Office to warehouse. So you don't know what thir the 1325, is that what UK means, unknown? On, that is correct, yeah. And what it does has, zero uh, mean? Pardon me? What does zero mean? Zero no finish? No finish space whatsoever, I would suspect. So what is our subject property? Our subject property, um, that's a good question. If you don't know, you can say that. Um, I can estimate and I can show you on page four where the uh, offices are located on this property. And I believe Mr. Paul uh, touched on it when you go in the front door on page four of my brief. That component, the finished component, is where the center line of the hip is for the roof joint there. That's where the retail component is or the finished space component all along the front of the building. So is it safe to say that the retail and the office is the finished component and the remainder is unfinished? Yeah, you can say that. Yeah, when you're low, yeah, that's yeah, that would be a good analogy. Yeah. And what percentage is that roughly? Just roughly. You don't need exact. Roughly looking at the subject property, I would say, well, I can probably be very exact or An approximation is fine, Mr. McCann. Yeah, sure. I think that we spent over no, and two hours on this property already. I would say probably 20% would be a good approximation. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And would you agree that index number 770 Durand, you're showing a post reference lease? 70 Durand. <laughs> You are correct. Okay. Yes, yes, I am. Right. Yeah. No further questions, thank you. I just have uh, a couple of questions with respect to your characterization of retail. Yeah. The retail on the subject property sells new and used ETVs, RVs, things like that. Is that is that correct? That is correct. Okay, yes. among other things, right? Yes. And so I look at the pictures and clothing. there's yeah, clothing, there's yeah. accessories, there's all things like that. Right. Okay, your ex your uh, comparison number 14, 120 King Edward Street East. Right. That's Boyd Auto Body, is it not? That is Boyd Auto Body. And they sell nothing. They do not sell cars. They do not sell accessories. They don't sell clothing. It's just a car repair place. It's just a car repair place, Mr. Okay. Chairman. And, and that's right. Yeah, okay. you're correct. Yeah. Thank you. I have but it, it's, I guess what I, not to belabor this point, what I was trying to portray here, Mr. Chairman, 
is that this is not a warehouse in a sense where the, there are individuals going to this place on a regular basis. It needs to be in a good location and there are people going there on a daily basis. In a warehouse, a straight warehouse, uh, there's no activity from the public there. That's all. Thank you. And I understand that you have some rebuttals with respect I just, I'm to- I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, I have a further question. Yes. You, you mentioned that this has a service road and in your pictures right. on page, the first page of your pictures, I'm sorry, but I don't see the service road. I see a road that turns off of Dugald into the parking lot that is shared sort of between those two L-shaped buildings. So where are you saying is the service road? Okay, the service road, yes, you're right. Looking, are you look, Are you referring to item three? Uh, so you put on your pictures, on the, the set of pictures you sent in, you put oh, 1325 Dougald Road at the top, and right. you mentioned that across the street was the L-shaped building that we're talking about. There's right. two side by each, I'm presuming, the one on the left side is, uh, I'm not sure, but I'm presuming the one on the left side is uh, Transcona Trailer Sales. And I don't see a service road other than a parking lot. The service road runs just at the, at the east extremity of the building. It starts to service the buildings along that road there. It comes in directly in front of the property, off of Dougal. Mm -hmm. And the it's service sort of in road, between those two properties of those two L shaped correct. buildings, the entrance, correct? And then it goes there, into their parking lots. Yeah, if you look at the if you look at the service road, uh, yes, the service it looks road runs like a parking lot. That's why I'm saying, where's the service road from this picture? The service road would be that road between the. Uh, you see the grassy area. You see yeah. the number eleven, sorry one one five. That grassy oh, area there. That's an area you can drive down. That's what I would call the service road. Oh, I wouldn't. Be, I would have thought that was a sidewalk according to this picture. That's why I'm asking, because most dealerships that are in a community. Anyway, all right. Thank you. And then you said um, about unfinished in regards to Ms. Nesbitt's question. So are you saying that the service area then is called unfinished? So it's not insulated, it's not finished in any way, shape or form? No, no, just unfinished with respect to uh, office Showroom? finish okay. and yeah, drywalling and whatnot. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Sorry for the All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, Mr. McCubbin, you had indicated that you had some rebuttal. Yes. May, may I have a follow-up question, if that's okay? Certainly. Okay. Sorry, there's one point that was missed, and I and I brought it up in the realty aspect, but I'll bring it up here again because it is a key component. Although, on, can you please turn to your page? Um, your page four. The aerial photo. That does not show the entire site, does it not? No, it doesn't. Is this a redirect from a question previously asked, Mr. Paul? This is a question in regards to the property and how- Or is this rent. a new line of questioning? This is fine, I'll allow the question. Okay, fair enough. Okay. So if you look on page two, you do show the frontage of the property. You see yeah. to the left that there are rows of RVs. So, right, yeah. So. The brief that was submitted to the realty did show the entire parcel, including the parcel behind. The dealership aspect, these are only, when you buy a route, when you buy an RV, you order it. It doesn't sit on their site. They do have a few for display. They do have a few on site that are um, that are on consignment or they're trying to trying to sell because they're going to buy something else. Uh, or, or owner is going to buy something else and upgrade. But on site, how much do they charge rent? I don't know. I don't know, Mr. Chairman. So you are aware that between five and seven months a year, RV dealerships service and then they sure, is, this, is this something I, I put I think, in my brief here? I think we're getting a little bit further afield. I yeah. understand what you're doing, but Mr. Paul, you did testify already that uh, 
there was an additional income stream from the storage yeah. area and we'll uh, we'll take that okay i'll address it in summation then thank you thank you um mr mccubbin you had some rebuttal right thank you mr chairman has that been uh, forwarded yet uh, oh. Ms. Oh. Uh, Your the bottle applicant, March twentieth. Mm -hmm. Do we have that rebuttal yet? I am adding it right now. Oh, okay. Thank it's you. It's a series of pictures. Uh, it would appear. I I would need I would need. It as well. I haven't received it yet. Okay, it will be the last item in our uh, SharePoint. Have you received it yet, uh, Mr. Paul? Oh, okay. sorry. Uh, sorry. <laughs> no. Okay, so, Mr. Well, I've just sent that to you. Hey, I just got it. Thank you. Now, Mr. McCubbin, not to um, curtail your submission or your rebuttal at all, but these series of pictures appear to be of the comps used by the by Mr. Paul, and it would appear to me that this is a uh, demonstration of what a standalone store is and what a store that may be conjoined with another store. Is that safe to say? That's correct, Mr. Chairman. Also, the type of building. The access points and the 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 ability to to run a, a similar operation, so to speak, out of a property like this. Uh, uh, okay, yeah. if you, maybe if you could summarize as you as you go, instead of dealing with each property discreetly and and. and uh, individually or is that possible or is that uh, not possible I, I it's it's not possible i would like to point out uh, the uh what i'm doing here and I, it's it's i'm not trying to belabor the point here i think it's important and, and this is very important mr chairman uh in my in my view uh the comparisons used to compare to the subject property is inappropriate, and I'm going to try and point that out, and go ahead. and that and that's what I'm trying to do, and uh, I'll try to be brief uh, as much as possible. It's not going to be anywhere near what it's, well, it'll be fairly fast. Proceed. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, so 1301, the the comparison, Mr. Chairman, now uh, on Mr. Paul's brief, 1301 Keniston Boulevard. Unit two, you can see on page one of, should, are we marking this just rebuttal evidence or what should I refer it to? You can just, call it rebuttal, just rebuttal evidence. evidence. Okay, fair enough. So under rebuttal evidence on page one, you can see the uh, aerial photograph of the property and you can also see the, the street view of the property, so to speak. Um, it's a totally different building in a totally different location than the subject property. Um, this is in an industrial park setting right on Keniston Boulevard, and uh, one would expect the rents to be much higher in this in this location. Um, can this building be utilized for the purposes of uh, the subject property? No, it cannot. 
And that's my contention. Uh, number two, staples. Comparison number two, 1450. Staples, it's a part of a multi-tenant situation, Mr. Chairman. The end unit cannot be used for the purposes, does not have the land area. Nevertheless, it is in a much better retail location than the subject property, hence the higher rent. Number three, again, this is what I, th this again is a part of a multi-tenant situation, Mr. Chairman. We don't know the ceiling heights. The ceiling heights are less than the subject property. Uh, you cannot use this for the purposes. It's not a good comparison to be used. Much better location, mind you, than the subject property. Much better. Comparison number four on Naren Avenue. Now here you're getting into something with some land around it. Nevertheless, you're in almost like a super center situation, Mr. Chairman. So the land that would be, that would come <laughs> with the building, the thrift store would just be the parking in front and the parking on the side. Cannot store, cannot be used for the same purposes. Again, this is a really true retail type location. Comparison number five. On St. James Ashley Home Store, again, retail store, totally different building, much nicer, takes much longer to construct, more expensive to construct, hence the rents would be more. Comparison number six, Mr. Chairman, again on St. James Street. Some of the highest rents we have in the city for retail are on St. James Street. 840 St. James Street, I suspect you can park some, some of the units in front of the parkade that's on St. James Street, fronting on St. James Street. Nothing behind, no service area. Just as a truly, this is Michael's, Mr. Chairman. It's a retail store, total retail store. Hence the higher rents. 1425 Ellis, Lazy Boy. You have a standalone building here, Mr. Chairman. Not much land to park anything, again, in a retail location. Thrift Store, 2195 Pemela Highway, Mr. Chairman. It's a part of a multi-tenant unit. You can see where you can park some in front, but again, not suited for the type of use that the subject property has. Uh, number nine, Sterling Lion. Again, uh, it's a unit in, in a strip situation, Mr. Chairman, not much land around, high rents in a very affluent area of the city. 841 Leela Avenue, we have a Marshalls here, almost like a, a sort of a department store situation, and you can see where it's located. It's an end unit in a multi-tenant situation. And uh, this particular one here, number 10, I guess, the area is 10,000 square foot, much smaller than the subject property. 11. We have a giant tiger, Mr. Chairman, at 2195 Pemina Highway. I'm not sure how you're going to run uh, uh, an RV dealership out of a giant tiger, but it's a good location for truly retail. It is a retail situation, totally retail. Again, the same with uh, 1596 Ness Avenue. We have a Dollarama in a building that's... Uh, I believe this is by the industrial park, uh, 1596 Ness Avenue. It's, it would be the building right next to, if you look at the building, the photograph on top, Mr. Chairman, it's the unit right beside it. It's, mm -hmm. it's right beside the unit as part of a multi-tenant situation. Uh, 1485 Portage Avenue, Spirit Halloween is located in there. 
Again, much better location than the subject property, much smaller building. Giant Tiger and Ellis Avenue. Again, almost in a power center. Not a similar building, not a similar location. And 841 Leela Avenue, same situation again, Mr. Chairman. You can see where it's located within that multi-tenant situation. And you can see the type of building it is. 18, 817 is peer furniture. Uh, it's not, <laughs> that wouldn't be, obviously wouldn't be a fit, the picture, Mr. Chairman, of that, <laughs> it, but it's in that relative complex. Again, attached to Cole Park Shopping Center, just behind Cole Park Shopping Center. But it's not the building that uh, that is on uh, on the photograph. No, it's not. Uh, 710 St. James Street. You can see where that's located. Again, a much affluent area. Truly retail, Mr. Chairman. Not comparable to the subject property. Uh, sport check, 3673 Portage Avenue, again in a multi-tenant situation. Same thing, trying to go as fast as possible here, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Best Buy, again, it's a truly retail uh, location on St. James Street. Uh, can't be considered a, a viable comparison for the subject property. Uh, much higher rents, mind you, because of its location. Uh, again, because of its location on Region Avenue, much higher rent for 1546 pet land. And you can see where that building is located. There's some surrounding land there that can be used. The parking lot is right in front of the building. Uh, 600 Empress, Beyond Bath, Bed and Bath, sorry, and Beyond. Again, retail situation, very nice building, very expensive to build. And show and so it and it shows in the rents and a better location. Mark's work mm -hmm. warehouse, the same thing. You just have to look at the edifices of these buildings, Mr. Chairman, and the type of buildings, and you can see that they are much better than the subject property and in much better locations. And that's what I'm pointing out quickly here. Uh, same goes for 830 St. James, the same goes for 550 Sterling Lion. Uh, Parkway, multi-tenant situation again. Um, uh, we have on the other page, 550 Sterling Line Park, Park, Parkway, and page 26, again, a unit within that is used as a comparison. Page 27 on Region Avenue, 1610 Region Avenue, we have a good life fitness on Region Avenue much better location. And finally, Mr. Chairman, uh, Beauclair home on uh, Certain Line Park with part of a multi-tenant situation, page 28. Uh, and it shows the relative comparison. So uh, that is my rebuttal evidence with respect to the comparisons provided by the event, the assessments, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Paul, questions? Uh, no, other than, um... I'm not sure why they keep getting Silver City wrong. It's really eightfold bigger than the comp. Um, I've explained it at the realty hearings multiple times. It's eight times large, about 80,000 square feet. So clearly it's not. Um, I don't know why all this hasn't corrected that in the rebuttal information. So um, the only question, the only statement I have into that is these aren't, when I say standalone, these aren't part of a mall. There's no common entryway exit way as far as, far as a mall participant. These are stand, these are buildings that are, if you want to look at it in terms of standalone, meaning physically detached or whether it's a strip mall, um, the CRUs that you would be occupying are completely separated. There is no causeway between the two. So if you occupy one of these CRUs, it's fully demised. You have a storefront. You have uh, places to, for your parkers to park, which would be similar to your inventory that you'd be parking on your lot if you're a car dealership or vehicle dealership. Um, so these are similar in nature. These are where the municipal directs us to look at, and that's what I brought in. So that I'll address the rest of the summation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Nesbitt, questions? I have no questions. Thank you. Ms. Knight? No, thank you. 
and I have no questions. Uh, Mr. Pohl, have you any rebuttal filed? No. Uh, summary. You'd indicated that you wish to make a summary. A few minutes summary. Um, generally speaking, this entire argument has been heard already. It's pretty much the exact, it is the exact same comparables, um, both presented by assessor and by uh, uh, agent. The board has already indicated that they confirmed it and inclusive of that is the rent. Part of it, which I, uh, the agent said they didn't address the, the books, they didn't look at the books. But part of what came up at the, at the hearing was the desirability of this site, given the usage of storage on site and the parcel that is behind it. It doesn't show up in the agent's brief today because it's not a full picture of the site, uh, but the realty side of it, the agent didn't include the full picture of the site, included the site behind. And part of that would be the substantial income that would be generated off this particular site and the site to the rear, given the storage of these RVs. Uh, typically, you store between five and seven months a year, and you'd store by length. Uh, that could range from anywhere from $60 a month up until over $100 a month. And there are several hundred um, lots or spaces on these two lots. All that income would flow through that dealership. From that dealership, the generated economic opportunity that you could get off of it would translate into rental rate. Uh, and that is substantial. Um, so it's not just sales and service. The storage element, although it isn't included in the assessor's brief, will be being explored once we go to the municipal board when we review these type of properties. So um, with that, I feel that you're fully informed of everything that was presented at the realty hearing, inclusive of the today. And I hope uh, that you confirm the assessment as, as, as you did in the realty, as, as you heard the same information here today. Thank you. Uh, Mr. McCubbin, summary? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, it's, it's apparent uh, throughout questioning and, and in the assessor's presentation that the, the assessor is mis mixing business value with realty value. Just from his last comment, I can tell you that's what's going on here, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'll leave it with you. I'm not going to believe at this point. I've been long, and thank you very much for... <laughs> for uh, listening to me and the questioning. This is the bulk of the evidence and we should flow from here. I think you have it all in hand and you will make your decision. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we will apply the evidence that we've heard to the other uh, properties Correct. to which it may affect. And uh, that matter is concluded. We will move on to the next matter at 1350 Dougald Road. May I request a two minute recess, just a uh, two minute recess. Sir, certainly. Thank you. Thank you. Call this meeting back to order. Uh, we're going to jump ahead a little bit on the docket. Uh, suggestion made that we deal with the matters to be confirmed uh, before we get into some of them because it doesn't look as though we're going to complete this docket today. The matters on which I do not have briefs from all this, um, and I'll ask Mr. McCubbin, this item number six at 1496 Region Avenue West, I don't have a brief from you on that. Is that matter proceeding? Uh, no, it's not, Mr. Chairman. We're going to ask for confirmation on that. Okay. Then, uh, Mr. Pohl, can you please make the pres make your presentation with respect to item number six on the docket, please? Sure. You you have to let me catch up. I I don't have it uh, okay. uh, laid out in such a way. So just bear with me one second. But the address, the street address, is fourteen ninety six Region. Yeah. Yeah, it'll maybe take me 30 seconds to pull it up. All right, uh, uh, 1496 Regent, file number 224408. Business uh, assessment ID number is 51005. The total annual rental value is $225,020 for a total area of 12,220. The overall ARV was $18.25. 
the base rent that we, or net rent that we put on is $15.75 with uh, the occupancy cost to the right, which gets us back to the ARB. It is owner occupied. It is a, uh, a dealership. Uh, we've already heard the exact same rent comparables uh, and I'll only say it once now, don't need to say it again and again. Uh, and that the, uh, at the realty uh, hearing and that the board uh, decision was based on the evidence presented by the assessment and taxation department. So it, uh, it was confirmed. So with that, um, I'll be asking for it to be confirmed here again. Thank you, Mr. McCubbin. Any questions? No questions, Mr. Chairman. And I just asked for the, the assessment to confirm. Oh, sorry, the annual grant of value. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Nesbitt, any questions? I have no questions. Thank you. And Ms. Knight. No questions. Thank you. And I have no questions. If we can turn to item seven on the list, please. I believe that is the street address of 670 Century Street, St. James Volkswagen. Okay. I'll be a little quicker now. Um, So a business uh, business assessment ID number is 5376. The file number is 224331. And again, uh, 670 Century. The total annual rent to value is 671,460. The total area of the premise is 41,357 square feet with an overall ARV of $16.24. Uh, the base rent that was applied was $13.92. And the occupancy costs are to the right. Um, it is owner occupied. And again, this was part of the realty uh, <laughs> group of appeals, and it was confirmed, done by myself. And again, it was based on the assessment taxation department's workout, which is the same rent here today. So that'll last for a few Thank you. Uh, Mr. McCubbin. I have no questions, Mr. Chairman, and I ask that it be confirmed the annual rental value. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Knight, any questions? No, sir. Ms. Nesbitt. No questions, thank you. And I have no questions. That matter is concluded and we will move on to number eight on the list, please. That is 3636 Portage Avenue, River City, Florida. Uh, Okay, uh, file number is 224461. Again, address is 3636 Portage Avenue. The business assessment ID number is 42727. Um, obviously, River City Ford. The annual rental value is 529,680. The total area uh, premise of 33,000 square feet. The overall ARV is $16.05. Uh, the net rent or base rent that we applied was $13.77. The occupancy costs are to the right. Uh, the owner-occupied, it is owner-occupied, uh, as all the car dealerships are. And it was confirmed. The order is for the realty side of it. it was confirmed on the next page. And again, that was based on the assessment taxation part of seven. So with that, I'll ask for it to be confirmed again. Mr. McCubbin. Uh, no questions, Mr. Chairman, and I ask for the assess the annual rental value to confirm. Thank you. Ms. Nesbitt, questions? I have no questions, thank you. Ms. Knight, question? No, sir. My only question, I probably missed it as I was making notes, uh, $529,680 for the annual rental value? That's, uh, that's correct. I already shut the file off. Five hundred twenty-nine thousand six eighty. Yes. Thank you. I'll just I'll mm -hmm. check that off when it comes, and I had never checked off. Uh, thank you. That will conclude this matter then, and we will move to number nine on the docket. Number nine being at nineteen hundred Main Street. Okay, uh, the file number is 224332, 1900 Main Street. Business assessment ID number is 43398, uh, Winnipeg uh, C Motors Limited. Um, 
uh, I guess you would call Eastern. It's still Eastern, I guess. Uh, the total iron out of value is uh, 562,020. And the total leased area of the premise is 41,600. And the ARV overall is uh, $13.51. Uh, it is owner occupied. You can see from the lease, it is, or, the, or I should say the rental, uh, the, the base rent or the net rent in place, it ranges from $15.71, $4.40, $10.88, to summate to the, uh, the base rent and, and occupancy uh, costs of uh, $562,020. And with that on the next page, we see that the realty was already confirmed. And it was, again, based on the same information that I presented here today. So uh, with that, I'll ask for Thank you. No questions, Mr. Chairman. I ask for the annual rental value to be confirmed, please. Okay, Ms. Knight, questions? No, sir. Ms. Nesbitt? No, no questions, Mr. Chair. And I have no questions. Uh, we can conclude that matter. And I'm going to jump now to number 11 on the docket. I believe there's a dispute at number 10. Number 11 on the docket is 55 Fultz Road, Addison Subaru South. Uh, the file number is 224181. Uh, the address is 55 Fultz Boulevard. Business assessment ID number is 41218. And again, Jim Patterson, Subaru South. The annual rental value is uh, 969,900. The total area is 56,162 square feet. The overall ARV is $17.27. Below that, uh, the base rent or net rent we applied was $14.77 and the occupancy cost are to the right, which gets back to the 969,900. It is owner occupied. On the next page, uh, it was decreased by a small amount. It went from 12 million, for the realty side of it. Uh, the order did indicate it was reduced from 12 million, 216,000 down to 11 million, 169,000. Uh, but on the third page, it's indicated the decision is based on the net operating and percent by the assessment of the taxation department with capitalization rate of 7%. So with the net operating income, they adopted our rent. That's ultimately confirmed our rent. Uh, so with that, the information is the same that I would present for rental today. So we're asking for it to be confirmed. Thank you. Mr. McCubbin. No questions, Mr. Chairman. And I ask for confirmation. Of the Thank you. Ms. Knight? No questions. Thank you. Ms. Nedved. No questions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I have no questions. Given the confirmation, we'll conclude this matter. And the last matter for which I believe is confirmation is being sought is number 12. Um, that's 485 Sterling Lion. <coughs> Uh, roll number, or sorry, I should say file number is 224333. Business assessment ID number is 53630. The address is uh, 485 Sterling Park Drive and it's Audi, Winnipeg. Um, the annual rent of value is 1596840 The total area is 75,112 square feet. The overall ARV is 21000 $21.26. Uh, and the rents that we had applied to it, uh, our base rent or net rent is $20.72. That is for the above grade portion and the below grade portion, which is uh, an underground structural uh, uh, level is $16.10. So uh, with the occupancy cost to the right, that gets us back to the annual rental value of $1,596,840. 
So on the next page, we see that the property was confirmed for the realty side of it. And that on page three is decision is based on the evidence presented by the assessment taxation department. The realty brief is attached and the same rental information that was confirmed and that hearing would be the same that it presented today. So I would expect or wish that it be confirmed. So, or asked to be confirmed. Thank you, uh, Mr. McCubbin. No questions, Mr. Chairman. And I ask that it be confirmed. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Nesbitt, any questions? No questions, Mr. Chair. Ms. Knight. No questions. <laughs> And I have no questions given the request. We will conclude this matter and move back in the docket. Are there any other matters uh, that I have missed that on which you will be seeking confirmation, Mr. McCullough? I don't believe so. No, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Then we will turn to number two on the docket, that being 1350 Dougald. Okay. And I just remind the panel that uh, the chair, uh, that I do have a time restriction uh, restriction of uh, 4.30 today. I'll try to get through as much as we can, but I do need to stop there. Yeah, I, I'm aware of that. Uh, so we'll see how this uh, property goes and then assess uh, from there. And before we close, we'll get everyone's schedule for the next couple of weeks and try to arrange with Visa for an um, adjourned date. No, oh. we would just put it back into pending. Just put it back as into pending. As long as we don't open them, but... Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's let's keep it rolling. Then I guess uh, file number is twenty two forty five zero three. The address is thirteen fifty Dougal Road. So adjacent to the one we just spoke about, it is a uh, twenty business assessment ID number is twenty five zero eight. The business is Ron's Marine. I have been in this building multiple times over the years. I own. I'm an outdoors kind of guy. I own boats, quads, trailers. That's kind of my thing. Uh, Total annual rental value is uh, $342,060. Uh, $342, the total area of the premises is $26,161. And the total uh, ARV is uh, $13.08 a square foot. On the page below, or just below that, you see the three premises that are broken out. The main premise is, uh, of course, the 17461 uh, square foot which receives the $12.70, similar to the rent rate that was put on the last property um, on Dougal 1330. And then we have some cold storage and shop area, which we have at $8.89 and $4.70. So with those rental rates, uh, I believe the areas are confirmed. They are proper. Uh, there were some issues prior, but I believe that was ironed out. Uh, so those areas are correct. Uh, so the that leads back with the occupancy cost to the right to the three hundred and forty two thousand and sixty dollars. It is owner occupied. Um, highlighted in yellow. Below that, you see the book rents that are in place. Uh, I don't put any weight to book rent as that's just what shows up on the eye. So, in the next page over, we see that the realty side of the appeal, the thirteen fifty Dougal, was confirmed. Um, and part of that was uh, obviously the rent, and that was confirmed as well. Um, on page three, or five of my brief, three of the realty of the same rents highlighted in yellow in areas. On uh, page six, you see that the, the, the property itself is uh, same idea, showroom. Pretty much uh, walk in, you see to the right, uh, right, uh, you see the boats. And they sell uh, other things as well. It's typically these, just so we're clear. Um, you need a winter. You need a winter product line. You need a summer product line. You need to make money twelve months a season. So um, as we go through, we'll go through that. On page seven, you see the inventory line. There are the product lines that they carry: Polaris, quads, sleds, ATVs, uh, Victory motorcycles. Obviously, motorcycles. Uh, and then Mercury, uh, they carry a full range of Brunswick boats at the time, which would be Lund, uh, Alumacraft, and um, Lead Present Liner. Uh, so as you can see, as we go through the pictures, and I'll just go through them quickly, time dependent, it's the same argument that we've just heard. So as you can see, they're selling what they're selling. Uh, dirt bikes, apparel, uh, all the parts you would need, all the accessories you would need. All the little boys that you throw behind your boat, 
Uh, you notice that most of these here, everything that they sell needs a registration with MPI, whereas uh, it was on the road themselves, um, or on MPI roads themselves, given that they do need trailers. Uh, put your, your, what you purchase on a trailer most often. Uh, page 14, moving on from page 14, we get to the 2021 inspection. So we do have a real re recent inspection which I was getting to um, on page 17 is the signage. Again, they carry Polaris, they carry KTN, they carry Mercury, Crescent Liner, Prince Craft, Bay Liner, South Bay. Uh, some of the product lines do change over the years. All of them do, depending on who's carrying one at that particular year. So, um, <clears throat> so on the next few pages, we'll just scroll through again. Um, it's typically what they sell and they service and what they sell, they also store. Um, we get on, we go through the back to page 37, we see the service bays. And then on page 38, you see the additional bill into the, to the back. Um, they sell and service and store. Um, if you look at the yard out back on page 42, you see that those boats are wrapped in blue. They service them. And then they wrap them for winter and then they charge you for it. So again, that's a, a desirable feature to have for your parcel, whether it's in this case here, it's somewhat on the parcel and then there's an additional parcel again to the back. Any, if it, any dealership that would be looking to rent from it would be looking to utilize that area and collect money off of it. And that translate into the rental value that you get in the actual bill in itself. Now, if this was rented to something else other than that, there's still yardage that has a utility to it be used for, whether it be truck service center, whatever. So there is no mistake in going concern uh, versus realty, uh, realty value or realty rent. Uh, as much money as you can make on the site is how you and why you would be uh, why you would be um, getting an upper rent or a rent that would reflect what you can do with the utility that services on site. So, and the comparables that we use, as you can see, they're out in them. They're out in the Winnipeg marketplace. Uh, this is completely independent from what's going on on site. So we do have the marketplace covered as well as the site specific nature. So as we go through here, you can see the storage of the boats in the next few pages. It's quite a big site. <coughs> <coughs> and then just some docking in the back. So again, uh, when we get a little bit further into it, uh, again, this is more of a, if you look on page 50, I'm not sure why this was such a big issue for the last appeal, but this is more of a Robertson uh, um, framing. You see the cross members up top, it's steel frame construction. That's what it is. Whether it's built on site or built, uh, fabbed in and, and trucked in and erected on site, I don't think that really plays into the real estate, what, what a tenant would pay for rent that's already been constructed, that's done. Um, you're simply using it for what economic opportunity you can gain on site. So. Well, how the method of construction was done years ago, unless unless there's some something catastrophic that happens on site, I don't really feel that plays play at all. Um, on the next few pages, again highlights exactly what I was indicating. You can see the steel cladding. You can see the the, the rafter, um, the Robertson supports, and the steel beams that go across. So, uh, and you can also see the lifts in place that would, would need to lift the boats off the trailer. And service them so uh, uh on page 61 starts the the wrapping of the boats uh my boat you don't wrap you just leave it with a tarp on it some people won't put a significant uh investment in the recreational vehicles uh you wrap some of them get heated and storage storaged and climatized um heated storage for the winter um that's what they service so um as you go along uh, you can see that this is just the inventory that they have, the the, the parts on hand through the storage areas. Uh, the inspection went through the building in full um, parts. And then we get up, excuse me, to page 77, 78, where you get back to the service and the day-to-day -day business uh, for uh, the consumer when walking up to the property. So you're back in the showroom. Uh, or Reaper Apparel, anyways, on page uh, 78, where you'd be able to buy what you'd be able to buy. So um, if you scroll along, as you can see, the product line is geared for power sports. 
that's what this dealership is. It is a power sports dealership. Um, there's a municipal board order out there that called it a marina. I'm unsure if the assessor or the agent uh, really knew um, what they were really looking at. Um, they are servicing and selling our sports vehicles and the trailers that go along with it. So virtually everything has an MPI plate on it. It is not a marina. Um, can't drive there in a boat. It doesn't sell rods. It doesn't sell bait. No one will tell you where the fishing is good. It, well, maybe, maybe there's a few guys like that. Um, but it's not a marina. It is a power sports dealership. So that's how I, it should be viewed. Uh, as you go through, you see on page 87, a uh, little cubicle where you would, uh, your day-to-day -day business for what you're going to purchase and, and signing the contracts or whatnot. So um, moving a further along, you could just scroll through it. You see the roof, you see the construction, you see the storage, washrooms, mez area looking down, obviously, onto the, onto the, onto the retail com or, or apparel component, parts component. And then if you look to the small bay windows, if you, it's the same as the other property. When you walk through those doors, you get into the showroom area where they have quads, uh, boats, side-by-sides, whatever they're selling on, on, on the doors. <laughs> on page, what do you mean? Getting over a little bit of a cold still. Uh, on page 101 is the mezzanine area, as you can see. Uh, your office in the background, storage for files, and your in your general day to day. Your lunchroom starts on page four or one hundred five and one hundred six, basic lunchroom, and then page one hundred seven starts back at the other building where you can see the boats that are in storage. Uh, there's the boats that are being serviced, and they're on the trailers there with uh, their, their workout. So uh, page uh, one hundred nine. Again, more of the storage element, your parts. Uh, and then you're leaning back down to page 11, or sorry, back going up to the mez stairs. So lots of storage, as you can imagine. Um, there are a lot of parts with the operational data and brick and need servicing. Um, uh, on page 120 is the INE. <laughs> Indicates it's Ron's Marine. It uh, doesn't indicate that it's owner occupied, although it is owner occupied. I've looked at this. I've looked at. Uh, uh, I've looked at uh, the status of titles as far as the business searches as well. It is owner occupied. So, and then on the last page is the same comparisons that we've used already today, uh, page one twenty two. So, I'm not going to speak to any of them. I think they've been covered at nausea, uh, but the weighted average was eighteen dollars and one cents. So with that, I feel we are, uh, again, we are missing this, uh, the, literally the storage component, what you would store on site and translates back to the dealership as far as what a dealership would rent for. That is a significant, um, significant income constraint, which would create value for what an <clears throat> uh, what a economic, uh, economic business that you could do on the site. Uh, and that would translate into what, 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 what a tenant would rent for. But uh, with that said, we are going with a market approach. We do have the market comparables that we presented. And with the rent that we have in place at $12.70 for the main building, $8.89 and $4.70 for the service and cold uh, storage areas, <coughs> I feel it's uh, properly assessed. And with that, I'm open to questions. Thank you, Mr. Paul. Uh, Mr. McCubbin, and keeping in mind that all of the evidence we heard with respect to the property at 1330 Google will uh, apply equally to this property. Right. Thank uh, you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. Questions. I, and no questions, Mr. Chairman. And I can, I have a suggestion that we can hear this entire brief, uh, this entire docket uh, within five minutes. Uh, if, if we uh, keep it brief, and if we can just, uh, if you can look at the evidence that I've presented, we've heard the arguments already. We can we can hear this entire docket today. Okay, we'll, we'll do it so one at a time, can, and so. uh, we'll follow the process. But uh, okay. I, I do right. appreciate the uh, yeah uh, the judge. So if, yeah, if you have I, I can sorry I, I can no give you, I I can give you to four forty five if we make this work. But I literally have to shut the camera off and run at four forty five. I have to pick my son up at five. So. Okay, well, we'll see how far we get. I'm not going to 
um, reach any protocols or get outside the process just for the sake yep. of expediency. Sure. Um, no problem. But, uh, Ms. Okay, Mr. McCubbin, Ms. 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 Uh, Ms. Nesbitt, have you any questions? I do not have any questions. Thank you. Ms. Knight. No questions. Thank you. And I have no questions. Uh, Mr. McCubbin, your presentation. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, so if you can turn to page two of my brief, please. Uh, you can see the applicant is Ron's Marine Limited, 1350 Dougal Road. Uh, roll number is 2508. The effective age of the building, it was built in stages. The effective age of the buildings and site is 1997. The premise area is 26,161 square feet. Uh, we're dealing with four acres around surrounding this building, Mr. Chairman. We're asking him for a reduction of the annual rental value from $342,060 to $263,580. And turning to page four, uh, the subject property is best described as a recreational vehicle dealership and service center situated on a uh, four acre parcel of land. Um, the site has a single access point off Dougal Road through the adjoining property, 1330 Dougal Road. This property has been constructed in stages, and you can see the stages below there, Mr. Chairman, uh, beginning in 1985 and ending with the 2,700 square foot uh, portion of the building, which is that standalone, the uh, rectangular building to the left of the photograph. Uh, the, the back portion of that was added on, lastly, and it's used for dead storage in a sense, no equipment loads, they just leave it there for a season. And uh, that's uh, 14 feet high. And that building itself is 14 feet high, Mr. Chairman. And the building uh, right next to it, uh, the main building is 18 feet in height um, for a total of 26,161 square feet. Um, uh, again, on page six, uh, same arguments and same comparisons. So we don't have to go through that again. I I, uh, I feel, I really do feel uh, with respect to show, showroom and warehouse, 17,461 square feet, an appropriate rental rate for this property would be $9 a square foot, Mr. Chairman. And for the storage warehouse, which is adjoining, not adjoining, but beside that property, which uh, is a sum total of 6,2700 square feet, 14 feet uh, in height. Uh, the, the building uh, is a shorter height, built in 2008 and 2016. I would say that would go in the market for $6 a square foot in the general vicinity for the same type of use, Mr. Chairman. So I ask that uh, uh, we feel an appropriate rate, an overall rate of $8 a square foot is... Uh, is very reasonable for this property in terms of rental rate. And to that, the cost to occupy, we have arrived at a total value, annual rental value of $263,580 rounded, and we ask for it to be reduced to that, Mr. Chairman. And I'm open to questions, thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Paul. Uh, other than just confirm that it is owner-occupied? Yes, it is on our bike. Yeah. Yep. And same questions and uh, answers would apply to the uh, 1330 Google. So with that, I don't have any further questions. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Knight, questions? No, sir. Ms. Nesbitt? I have no questions. Thank you. And I don't have any questions. Uh, any need to summarize, gentlemen? Uh, I don't see a need to summarize, Mr. Chairman. Then no, I don't. Okay, then we'll conclude this matter and move on to number three on the docket, and that will be 925 Lage Mortier. Okay. Uh, file number is 224606, 925 Lajamodia Boulevard. Business uh, ID number is, uh, business assessment ID number is 37336. Uh, it is Ends Brothers equipment or Ends Brothers. It is owner occupied. We have an annual rental value of 695,340. The total area is uh, of the premises 49,496 square feet. And the annual rental ARV, or the overall ARV, I should say, is $14.05. Below that, we see that we applied $11.66 
uh, to the building or on a network basis, and then the occupancy costs are to the right. Um, we see that the property is owner occupied. Um, on page two is the realty side of it. Uh, it was confirmed and was based on the information that uh, um, was presented by the assessment taxation department. Again, I was part of that hearing. The brief for realty is on the next page. And um, on page five shows the rents that are the same. On page six shows the location of this property. It's just off Dougal. It's one parcel over from the corner of Dougal. So if you're going over the overpass or over the overpass for the train yard rails, I should say, uh, you have the other properties that we just spoke to on Dougal. Uh, so it's in close proximity to that. Uh, if we go through the pictures, it is again a power sports dealership uh, uh, with uh, additional product lines um, as far as yard works and stuff like that. So on page seven is another good look at the site. See up front, they sell boats, they sell quads, they sell side by sides, and pretty pretty nice equipment in, in here. So towards the back, there's storage. So if we walk through the property, uh, and I have been in this building uh, as a customer, and we'll go through it as such. So on page eight starts the property. As soon as you walk in, there's a service desk. And if you look to the windows, there's little cubicles where you can sit to speak to the salespersons or, 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 uh, or um, service personnel. Uh, you can see what they sell, quads, side-by-sides, apparel, boats, uh, spiders, uh, uh, some pretty significant boats, um, Mastercraft product line. Uh, all the apparel and gear that go with it. You can see as you go along, and you look to the back, you see the mezzanine area that supports it all the way along. Uh, you see on the main floor, the concrete is polished concrete. Uh, it is not an industrial um, concrete. It is a, it is finished for retail. Uh, it is a steel frame building. Again, a steel frame roof, columns, slab on grid construction, steel mez, a very simple building. Uh, as you go along, you will just scroll through, shows a better shot on page uh, 13 and 14 of the MES and the product lines up as far as the quads and side-by-sides. And as you go all the way through, it's pretty much a uh, one-stop shop for, for, for what you would want to buy. Again, summer, winter, it's typical format that these um, power sports dealerships take because if you don't, you're not making any money around here. Uh, so they sell summer, they sell, they sell winter. So. On the next page, we see that there was uh, no uh, response to the questionnaires, but we're not asking for any uh, any uh, any penalties or deferrals today. So on the same, on the next page over is on page 19, same comparables that we've already used and discussed, so we don't need to raise any questions on those. So with that, I feel the assessment uh, should be confirmed here today. Um, given that the same rental information has already been confirmed uh, at the realty side and it presented the exact same today again. Um, and with that, I'm open for questions. Thank you, uh, Mr. McCubbin. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Paul, uh, with respect to the mezzanine area, if I can turn to page three of your presentation, uh, please. Uh, the total leasable area is 49, 496 square feet. What portion of that is mezzanine? Uh, I don't have that broken out. Uh, we took it as an one economic unit. We don't put any different differential rates to the mezzanines. We used to for all of the dealerships, uh, but we have since converted it back to one economic unit as that's how they would lease out. Um, I couldn't give you the exact mezzanine area at, at the moment. If you want to know that, I can look it up. Um, no, that's fine. I, I have that in my brief. I'll be presenting that. Yeah, um, thanks. Thanks for that, Mr. Paul. So um, you pointed out the mezzanine area. You spoke at, at some length. Uh, if I can turn your attention to that, <laughs> like um, page nine of your presentation. Yeah. Uh, so there's a stairway taking up part of the main floor going up to the mezzanine. Is that correct? Yeah, the mezzanine runs around three perimeters of the building, uh, the, the the back and the sides. You can see the yellow, um, yellow uh, Can-Am uh, banner that runs all the way around it. That is uh, the mezzanine area. Right. So it runs, uh, it's a significant size. 
So that mezzanine area, is, is that a structural floor there? Uh, mezzanine area would be structurally framed with steel, yes. Um, with respect to lighting, is it using the same warehouse lighting as the, sub, as the uh, main floor in the entire building? Well, there's, yeah, there's lighting on the roofs of the main floor, and then right. there's lighting the underneath the mezzanine area. You can so see there's that. no wall, there's no enclosed place. It's uh, it, it, it's just a wraparound. It's, uh, it's completely open. It's completely, it's completely open. open to the the main floor, and uh, it's it's tantamount to a catwalk, sort of around a, a wider catwalk around the building. Is that correct? That's one way to look at it. Yes, that'd be correct. Okay. Those are uh, those are the only questions I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Nesbitt. Questions? I have no questions. Thank you. Ms. Knight. No questions, thank you. I just have one question with respect to the square footage because there seems to be a slight discrepancy between yours and the applicants uh, about uh, 1,300 square feet. The catwalk area or the mezzanine area, however it's described, that is included in the entire economic unit? Yes. It's added into the main floor. It's added yes. into the square footage. Yeah. Yes. Like um, over the years, when I first started this, there was always a mez area or whatever, and we separated that out over the cycles. We've reduced that and eliminated in virtually every uh, dealership that we that we that we look at, as it's typically you wouldn't get a different rental rate, given that it's one economic unit. You get one rental rate for the buildings, and that's how we reflect about that. So um, okay. there is no mess space. And well, physically, but we don't account for it in the, in the premise the way we have it. Right. Uh, the 49,496 square feet is derived from city records? records city records, records, yes. Okay. Thank you. I have nothing further. Uh, Mr. McCubbin, your presentation. Please. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, turning to page two of my presentation, Mr. Chairman uh, and Brothers Limited. Uh, um, location is 925 Lajimodier Boulevard. Um, when I visited the site, Mr. Chairman, it's off of uh, a service road. So if you drive down too far down Lajimodier, you miss it. You will not be able to uh, access the site. You go to burn lumber uh, access to get into this site. Uh, there's the property right next door. Um, the effective age of the building is 1985. The uh, premise area in total, including the mezzanine, is 49,496 square feet. Uh, the annual rental value is $695,340. Uh, the requested annual rental value, Mr. Chairman, is $526,560. Uh, the current Owners moved into this property in 2008. I've been to this property on many occasions, including uh, in preparation of this brief too. Uh, and um, this was your Canada One trailer center, if you remember going back to previous 2008. That's, uh, that's the history of that property. Uh, uh, premise description uh, number four. Premise uh, the subject property is one story industrial building located at the east end of Lajimodier. The improvements were constructed in 1984 and 1990 with a gross building area of 50,074 square feet. Uh, for our business assessment purposes, we're using a premise area the same, exactly the same as the subject as the assessment and taxation department. Uh, 49,496 square feet. However, we've broken out the mezzanine area in our evaluation. Um, you can see the relative uh, years that uh, the building was constructed, 30,600 square feet uh, with the 9,474 square feet uh, wraparound uh, catwalk style mezzanine. Mr. Chairman uh, was constructed in a 1984 and the back portion of metal frame. This is a metal frame building similar to the ones on Dougal Road. Uh, built in uh, 1990, uh, the current owners built it, 10,000 square foot addition, same ceiling height, one story for a total of 40,600 square feet. 
Uh, you see photographs of the subject property and overhead there, Mr. Chairman, and uh, you can't really see the access point from that photograph, but uh, uh, from the uh, bird's eye view photograph, that's fine. Um, on page five, you can see the uh, the property and to be delineated, uh, the, 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 that yellow line you see is the, actually where the property line should be for that particular property. So it's sort of a, it's a rectangular shaped property. And the building is stuck in the middle of the property off the uh, highway. Uh, same rents were used as chairman on page, I'm now on page seven. However, uh, I've broken out the mezzanine area, Mr. Chairman, and I think this is more than reasonable. If not a little bit on the high side, this is the way it's always been done, valuing properties. Um, I totally disagree with valuing that mezzanine space as a catwalk that's using the same lighting as the rest of the building with no walls, just a catwalk around the building at exactly the same rate as the main floor. I take issue with that. I've put $4 a square foot on this, Mr. Chairman. My overall value is $8.25 a square foot. Using eight dollars and twenty-five cents a square foot, Mr. Chairman, I arrive at a total value, a net rent of four hundred eight thousand three hundred forty-two dollars. Added to that, no contention with respect to the cost to occupy. Total ARV five hundred twenty-six thousand five hundred thirty-six dollars, and I'm asking for that to the ARV to be reduced to that. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Paul. Questions? No, I just uh, confirmed it. You seen you went to the property as far as far as an inspection for this appeal? Yes, I did. Did you can you confirm that there is no basement areas in this property? There's no basement there, Mr. Jordan. That's the only question I have. Thank you. Ms. Knight, questions. Are you appealing the realty decision? Yes, we are. And can, can I ask on Ron's Marine, are you appealing that decision as well? Uh yes, we are. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. Nesbitt. I have no questions, thank you. And I see we're getting close to the time. Do we got time for one more? Mr. Paul, Mr. McGovern, I think we can get through. I'm, I'm, I'm okay, I'm just worried about Ms. Paul. Uh, you, you know, we can, if we're gonna go, if he has to go pick up his child, Mr. Chairman, it's, and we're gonna run over time, if we're going to hear two later on, we might as well just stop so he can have adequate time if we're going to reschedule. And, that, uh, and that's okay, too, because, I mean, we're not going to get through it all. One yeah. more is not going to change the next hearing. Oh. I, I don't see how we can get through the next one, given the time constraints, or yeah. the next three, given the time constraints. So um, yeah. I'm in a bit of a new situation here. Uh, Ms. Robo, what uh, do we do to adjourn three of the matters? If it's your call, if you want to adjourn now, then our meeting is adjourned. Okay, then I will say that that does not conclude all of the matters, but we will adjourn matters four, five, and ten on the list. To the registrar for further assignment. Okay. Our hearing is concluded. Our hearing is concluded. Thank you, everyone. Thank Have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Not done.